It's been a pretty eventful week. It's it's been a vibe. It's been a vibe. Facts, man. Shout out to shout out to all my real DIs in the building, man. We see y'all. We see y'all. We've been through. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, yeah. Eventful week to say the least. But there's a lot of eventful news that we do have to cover. A lot of interesting and juicy topics that came out from this week. Uh, and yeah, we just want to get right into it, man. So when is you ready? Born ready. Man, let's start with the main stories of the day, man. Let's start off with a big one. One I've been one I've been hearing a lot of words about, man. One I've been hearing a lot of chatter about in the hero shooter space. Marvel Rivals. Marvel Rivals, the brand new hero shooter from NetEase and Marvel, a whole new collab. Again, 6v6, Overwatch style. Uh, again, hero shooter, a whole roster of people, uh, different team up moves, again, new st- stages and all that type of stuff. That pretty much what you come to know and expect from a hero shooter of that ilk. Uh listen, that we've heard some big shouts about it and, and, and direct competition overwatch 2 considering that current state but we're gonna get into all that first impressions of what you saw from marvel rivals when so first things first um it feels and i I say feels as if i played it i haven't played it i gotta sign up for the for the alpha but it looks like paladins that's the 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 biggest view the biggest like comparison i can make but what i will say it looks prettier than paladins i'm not gonna sit here and disrespect it looks like a the the models look pretty solid as for i don't even know if we can really consider it i guess it is a shooter but i also know that like a lot of those characters or not a lot but there's there's gonna be more melee than than we're used to in these kinds of uh situations it looks not bad it feels Mm -hmm. like it was kind of designed for like every console in mind like and when i say this i mean like the most optimized game you can possibly put on every single console right Mm -hmm. like we're not gonna get the speed or like the high frames as if it was made on p for pc or the next or or current gen it's more like we're gonna make sure that it runs on the switch the current switch we're gonna make sure that it runs on like maybe even some high-end cell phones is what i felt like watching the gameplay um is it gonna be the overwatch killer i don't think so I don't think there ever really is going to be an over. The only thing that's going to kill Overwatch is Overwatch. And don't worry, they're working real hard at that. Like it, but it does look really, really interesting. Right now, if I had to put it, if I had to rate it from like a free to play standpoint, it's definitely something I'll download, something I'll keep downloaded. Maybe I might buy like a three dollar pack or a two dollar pack of like a starter hero bundle or whatever. It doesn't look like it's gonna get the monthly, the every three months re up on the battle pass type vibe. Um, it doesn't even look like the the hey, if you if you fucks with me and you want to give me a cheap Christmas gift, get me some uh, some hero gems for mm. the Marvel <laughs> game. You know, like it doesn't even look like that type vibe. Cause like I do that like when my friends give me league money, I'm like, oh this this is gas. I really appreciate. It. If you send me money for this game, I'd be like sure you know like all yeah. right cool like i'm okay with running with the default group you know what i'm saying i'm okay with running with the with the the free the free rotation of heroes but mm-hmm. it does look really good if you're like i know the eight-year-old market is seething for this <laughs> like the six seven like the marvel backpack boys they're gonna be on this one day one and oh, i'm yeah. honestly happy for them one thing that i will say that it looks cool though the team up abilities mm-hmm. that's something we don't normally see there's synergy when you're playing with a team but never built in synergy it's never like hey we we're making this an entire mechanic it's more like these characters work well together we plan that in mind but these this time it's like hey rocket will jump on Groot Mm -hmm. and I want to see how long they can keep it to two character specifics you know like I want to see how long they can say hey rocket can jump on to only Groot or will it become like "Mm, people aren't running Groot so rocket in in turn is getting hurt his playtime is getting hurt so Mm -hmm. now rocket can jump on the hulk's back or rocket can jump on this person's back you know that's one thing that i think is gonna be really interesting but i'm pretty sure i'm not looking too much forward to it because if i can't get my regular overwatch teammates to just shoot at the right person i (laughs) I doubt i can get them to play the right person 
Yeah. Uh, looking at it again, I can kind of I can jump off from that same point that you did again. What struck out to me most was that team up ability. And I'm wondering how they're going to parse it out is will, will it be again based on like the specific partnerships that we have seen in, you know, Marvel lore and comics and TV and all stuff like that? Or will it break down into like class based things? I don't I'm not sure it will be like entirely class based. It could be a mix between the two in certain, I guess, in certain uh, executions. Again, like, you know, like you said, like Rocket can eventually jump from groups back and if they're not seeing the the amount of numbers or, or synergies with that specific team up they might expand it to you know all heavies or all all tanks to a certain extent but you know there was other ones there was the hulk and iron man one where like i think it was an image of it where like, you can like shoot a gamma ray into iron man's blaster and he'll blast a bigger beam of gamma radiation towards enemies mm -hmm. or whatever um so uh, there's there's a lot of application for this i'm interested to see how many they've specifically you know they're specifically planning for i saw one between namor and uh, i think it was luna frost um i called her fucking lady or, or luna snow i was saying yeah. i'm confusing her with the uh, another character uh i'm confusing her with emma frost and lady frost which is a wrestler in the wrestling company so i uh, please uh, forgive, <laughs> me, forgive me i i got like three on my head uh so don't worry about that but i'm interested to see how those again are, are how specific and how tailored are those team ups across you know any given roster of players so it, that that definitely interests me i love the destructible environments i really appreciate it i i, I want to know how again how how much of an extent are we going to get th of that destructible environment it's gonna be like you know a couple things here and there that we can knock down will it be you know like maybe potential pathways that can be blocked off or you know big centerpieces that 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 you know may block off or be be served as cover in certain situations can those be destroyed i want to know how how heavy of an extent that they can push that because i would love to see very destructible environments like you know you can knock down perches that people might sit on to snipe like uh like a what's it called uh uh, what's his name guy from guardians of the galaxy a star lord uh, like a, yeah, like, yeah. A star, like a star lord can snipe out like it, there's a lot of contextual things that can be applied for destructible environments so i'm very curious to see how that kind of pans out in a you know in an in a setting like this and uh i think according to some uh you know some i guess like well just some still images and stuff like that that we've seen before the this is the roster um so it's Bruce Banner. Uh, apparently, it's Bruce Banner, the Punisher, Storm, Loki, Doctor Strange, Mantis, Rocket Raccoon, Black Panther, Groot, Magic, Luna Snow, Iron Man, Spider Man, Magneto, Scarlet Witch, uh, Penny Parker, Star Lord, and Namor. So that's a very that's a very solid starting list, honestly. And I, 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 what, what do you think is missing? What do you think is missing? All right, so boom, Penny Parker, <laughs> lover, right? Uh, awesome, Mantis. <laughs> Fool, where is where is Storm? Where is where is Storm's Cyclops? There, Storm's there. Storm's oh, Storm, there. Yeah, Storm is there. Right. Storm is there. Cyclops. Cyclops you know is I'm not saying? there. <laughs> I need Cyclops. I need Wolverine. Where are my big and Scarlet Witch? Is there? You did say Scarlet Witch, right? Yeah, I believe oh. so. Wait, let me double check it. Let me double check it. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, 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 she is. She is. All right, because like, hey, I'm I'm not saying I'm not saying these characters are not important. But what I am saying, there are more important things. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> like, I, I love Penny Parker, but a lot of people found out about Penny Parker through a movie that came out not too long ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, let's, we, where's my boy, Cy like, a, a hero shooter without Cyclops, to me, just doesn't make sense. But, I, I and I'm not that. even a Cyclops fan. I'm just like, that's kind of just a missed opportunity. But, hey, I do think, like, the entire, like, the roster's sick. Maybe Cable could have been a good idea, too. Or, like, I know, that, I know, dude, I know Deadpool's, Deadpool's going to do there. numbers. We know, and, we know and, he's going to be there. And, 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 and you already know the reason why this is, bro. They're like, oh, we'll give you some heat there, but <laughs> yeah. these DLC drops, baby, we got to make sure you're here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're going to hold, again, this this kind of delves into, like, all the, you know what I'm saying, the tinfoil, well, not really tinfoil hat theory, but just literal evidence of just omni-channel marketing and all that shit like that. They're probably not going to, like, you know, if the game drops, they're not going to drop it to some significant Deadpool content content comes out after the fact like the deadpool movie or some bullshit like that if they're dropping in may or, or june yeah. or the fuck they drop like yeah they might drop like wolverine and deadpool together yeah and, like or like, like yeah they'll wait, yeah, you know they'll wait with the movie roll out and stuff like that all this again all the omni channel stuff that people may or may not see but you know again i i can't I expect no less from Marvel. You know what I'm saying? Because they gotta hold their cars close to their chest if they want some type of longevity with this game. Uh but kind of working backwards again we talked about the the team up system we talked about the uh destructible environments the roster again i think i think this roster is solid honestly again a good mix of again shooters brawlers um uh, other worldly creatures as it were that 
and I want to see these team ups though. Magneto's automatically getting picked. Magneto's automatically getting picked, yeah. in my opinion, for me. Um, I know people are gonna run Spider Man. Black Panther will get automatically ran for me too, because that just is what it is. Of course, I'll choose what the team allows or whatever. I'm honestly willing willing to give this a try. No, we'll get you don't to have later. to do that. If it's like Overwatch, you don't have to worry about the team. Oh. It's not a team based game. This is a game where you have a team. <laughs> Play what you want and blame them. That's how. Uh, I'm, I'm, as an Overwatch player, I'm telling you, that's what you do. Like real gamers, baby, real gamers. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. But uh, outside of all those things, I can I can get back. Actually, before we get to that, I will say wish list. Definitely, we need Doctor Doom. Dr. Doom needs to show Doom up. Doom will be stupid, Dr. Bro. Doom needs to show up without a question. That is all that all off top. That's already there. Um, I would love, Sue Storm would be a shoe-in. Sue Storm is automatic shoe-in for this type of stuff. I feel like her, again, the skill set's so easy to do, like, you know, alts, the passives, and and uh, and uh, all that type of stuff, skills, all the skill sets. That would be an easy, easy fix for the game. Um, who else would be a really good, like, shoe-in person? Outside the popular, like, super popular I feel people. like you're missing three Avengers right now. Now. Yeah, that, that, that just makes sense. I mean, like Cap, Cap, Hawkeye, yes. oh, uh, Black yes. Widow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, forgot about that. That's I feel like, yeah, I feel like those three. If they're not in the game, I'd actually be shocked. Yeah. And again, I don't even like. I don't even like Hawkeye. But Facts. like, look at like everybody. Every character has a bow and arrow guy. Like mm -hmm. the, the bow and arrow guy got to be there. Black Widow just makes sense. True. She literally uses guns. And Captain America, who doesn't want to throw a shield that bounces off of people? Like, that's going to be a hard body. Like, Facts. like and, finding and that, the, the sweet spot. Oh, my God. And that's, a, and that's a team-up ability, though, too. Like, literally, he'll team up with yeah. him, him and Iron Man, bro. He'll hold the shield, and Iron Man will just shoot the thing off him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he'll shoot a beam off him. Boom. Like, oh. it's there. Right? Where's Thor? Oh, yeah. Where's I, Thor, I, They're actually? holding him. They're holding him, bro. They're holding him. He's say Thor will return. In Marvel mm -hmm. Rivals, bro, like they're they're holding for some type of content drop, man. You already know what time it is. That's the, that's my automatic assumption with these things. They're going to hold the, these big characters that aren't initial roster drops. They're gonna hold them. You're not gonna see them until a movie drops. So good luck, brother. You you yeah. might not see them till King Dynasty or something like that. So it is what it is. But uh, <laughs> if we get a King yeah, Dynasty, <laughs> shit, shit, that, yeah, nah, that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother major situation. No pun intended. You know what I mean? But. <laughs> Uh, like, but looking past that, my only major gripe was what I saw from the gameplay. It was the game speed. It was the game speed. I feel like it felt a little bit more sluggish compared to an Overwatch. Uh, I feel like it was maybe, a, again, like a couple notches behind. I feel like if they upped that and, again... I don't know what's up with me, and I I don't I know people are thinking like like the weight of hits, like the weight of things. You know what I mean? You want to feel a bit of crunch when you're getting those attacks, and at least at least it, from my view. Again, I'm not an Overwatch vet. I'm just somebody who likes to play games. So you don't take my word for it. Don't take my word as gospel. You know what I'm saying? But just from my view, I love when there's a bit more crunch to the stuff like that. And look like there wasn't as much so the game speed and i kind of like the those kind of the registering of hits i i want to see how that develops as they go forward um but if they speed up a little bit again make it a little bit crunchier i think they'll be in a really good spot they obviously have the ip to again sustain themselves and this is kind of one of the, this is one of those things where it's like it's an unfortunate hallmark of where we're at today but we have to kind of like make that a consideration like we talked about it with rivals 2 last week of like do they have the game mechanics the gameplay loop to sustain themselves and actually be a quality experience and do they have a strong enough ip to not be like you know disinterested by for people to not be disinterested in their product you know what i mean like it's it's a it's a it's a tough situation to be in because i want new stuff but at the same time games like this and live service you know what i'm saying free to play you know those types of games they will the sunset they will sunrise and sunset quick if we don't find you know again the happy medium between like people are interested in the ip in the world and the gameplay is actually good so there's that the question mark is only on the gameplay at this point um but outside of those things i'm i'm interested i'm interested i, I want to sign up for the closed beta they the the site i think crashed so it did not let me sign up you know what i'm saying i think it was just fate they wanted me to sit my ass down and wait so fine uh but i, I do want to sign up i actually want to try it again the last time i've tried a, a hero shooter uh beta was literally overwatch one and i have not played a, an over a, any hero shooter consistently since so we're, we're gonna see how it goes but i mean i i have i have a, a solid feeling about about uh marvel rivals will it be an overwatch killer 
like when said i have to fully agree and he said this before multiple times the only thing that can kill overwatch is overwatch and you know they're, they're working on it they're they're digging they're, they're getting the levels out there they're they're figuring out the they're case. doing a great job yeah <laughs> honestly, like truly honestly but we're just gonna see have to see how the game develops how it starts again what the content rollout is but uh, Marvel Rivals can certainly, certainly set up a good precedent for themselves to have sustained growth and have a sustained player base that just loves what it is. Because you know, it, it's it's fucking Marvel, guys. Let's 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 not beat around the bush it's, here. It's Marvel, baby. It's, it's Marvel. You know what I mean? Like they're as long as they have a solid gameplay loop, they'll be fine for years. And and that's and that's that's the crux of what I'm concerned about, honestly. But we'll find out when that closed alpha comes. But you know, so far, uh, Marvel Rivals actually looks solid, and it's it's getting a lot of eyes on it. So we shall see what happens. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what what they cook up. Uh, I'm not really holding my breath though. But again, I've been wrong before about games. So I would love I would love for this game to to replace Overwatch. I, and I'll probably end up playing this more than Overwatch at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, if the if the squad is on it, you know what I'm saying? Who running Black Panther? It, it, I can see it right now, bro. I can see it right now. It has a chance to really pick up steam and be a solid contender in this space, but it's just on them to nail the gameplay and nail the consistency of content drops. That's that's really it. All right, but we can slide on to the next bit of news here. Let's talk about the acquisition movements, man. Uh, namely the uh confirmation of stuff that we talked about either last week or the week before uh we talked about gearbox software gearbox entertainment and the news has been made official embracer group have officially divested gearbox entertainment they have moved it away it's no longer uh under under embracer control gearbox has been unembraced as many people on the internet have been saying and now take two interactive have bought uh gearbox uh entertainment for 460 million dollars again take two will get borderlands tiny t's wonderlands homeworld risk of rain brothers in arms duke nukem uh and those uh and those properties and embracer will retain cryptic studios lost boy interactive uh captured dimensions gearbox publishing san francisco that was going to be renamed so it's other, other things uh embracer also keeps uh hyperlight breaker and other notable unannounced releases from that part so that's how the split goes but we talked about this uh at length over the potential of of gearbox kind of moving away uh to another you know to another I guess owner in, in in a sense. When how do you feel about this uh divestiture, this pickup from Take Two on Gearbox software? So um first I would like to say to all the people affected by this merger, because there have been people affected Big by this facts. merger. Un unfortunately, Big this facts, is fucking awful. Which is bullshit. Um fucking I hate it. I hate it. It is literally probably I don't I can't recall, and maybe it's because I wasn't cognizant but this has been an awful year for gaming and it seems to not really be good for the workers and the people in it um yep. it is such a toxic time for for this medium and mm -hmm. truly truly wish for all those people to, to land solid positions in places that will appreciate them and hopefully you know support them for to for the future big facts um take two interactive kind of made away with the really big ips on this one um embracer group just a fucking fucking shit show of a company just mm -hmm. buying shit that they definitely cannot afford um we we got some like borderlands risk of rain like these are some fucking godlike ips man these are some really really powerful powerful franchises that they have under their belt now it's going to be interesting to see what they do with it um even though i really like I don't think they're it's it, it will change for them. Mm -hmm. I don't think Embracer really had an effect on these people because I really feel like Embracer bought them and they were just kind of like poking them like make money and then they yeah. weren't. So like it's gonna be interesting to see what happens now that they have like some uh, a partner or, or somebody who owns them that like is going to be more on their ass about shit. I'm not a big fan of Take Two and some of their like more business recent like yeah their general. business practices are awful. I risk of rain three drops and I gotta be, and I gotta pay for microtransactions. That's just gonna be pretty clapped. Mm -hmm. Um, thank God Risk of Rain 2 is such a good game that it's like that that's a game that I don't think I'll ever have to replace. Like that mm -hmm. game will always be super dope, super gas. Um, but yeah, hopefully I I don't know how much I've I don't know how much I like this, to be honest with you, because it just feels like Take Two has it and they could either make this really, really good, or we're gonna get microtransactioned out the ass mm. i don't really see any of these franchises surviving that kind of a change 
You know, people don't buy Risk of Rain because of the microtransactions. People don't really... I didn't buy Borderlands 3 with the intention of spending a million dollars on microtransactions. And mind you, my, uh, Borderlands 2 had a lot of them. Mm-hmm. That's not... I'm not going to sit here and pretend yeah. like this would be new to this fucking franchise. But I still remember a lot of people being like... A lot of people not buying them or just straight up just ignoring them. There used to literally be a list online of like, which, which Borderlands DLCs you should buy and why you should buy them. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll end up being like that where gamers are just gonna be like, hey, this Randy bought all of them. He thinks these suck and here's why they suck. And I'd rather listen to Randy than buy every single one of them. Or I'm gonna do what most people do and just wait for all of them to become in like a year, a uh, game of the year edition. And then I'll buy all the DLC or something like that. Mm-hmm. But that is, of course, my doomer mentality. Yeah. I, I'm hoping that Gearbox gets the support that it needs. Take Two definitely has a hit. Like, these are the people that own Rockstar, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, correct? correct. Correct. Like, if they can, if they can afford to pay for a Rockstar, like maybe they will get some some help, or maybe they can't because they're too busy paying for Rockstar. Mm-hmm. We don't know. But anyways, <laughs> fingers crossed. I'm trying to be positive. I'm channeling my inner trip. They will get the support they need <laughs> to make the games uh, fun and enjoyable, and they're not going to price gouge us. And it's everything's going to be a okay. Yeah. <laughs> This fucking guy. This fucking guy. I, I would actually could to try and continue the train of being. Well, let's again. Let's let's be candid and again and talk about this shit. I fucking hate when these merchant acquisitions happen because it's always some 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 movements with the people who are just doing their job, trying to live their dreams and make good shit happen. And that sucks to me. A lot of talented people were let go, and uh, I I didn't appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I hope everybody lands on their feet. To echo what Wen said earlier, and just to kind of talk about where gearbox kind of lands it's tough uh again embracer didn't do shit you know what i'm saying yeah. embracer just bought them just to have them and say oh let's let's you know let's see what what works you know what you guys can do the the game thing do the game thing make us some money yeah that's it and they didn't really support any of this they didn't support any of their processes now take two interactive i feel like if if the relationship isn't handled properly they could be on the other end of the spectrum where they're very much on top and they might change the core dna of how certain franchises run like when was stating and that could be a detrimental effect to how you know we perceive them how we buy them and stuff like that but hopefully i think the truth may hopefully again i'm saying twice knock on wood and say one more time hopefully lie in the middle uh and and they'll get the support that they need to just build out and really fi- really turn a corner again we spoke about it before at length gearbox needs a path to redemption in my opinion they were again at one point they were very very much you know on top on top of on top of the things in the mix is one of the best and you know most most entertaining studios that we've seen uh you know early 2010s borderlands 2 peak of their powers type 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 deal they have some hits they have stuff again i love the the wonderlands franchise love wonderlands game uh home world again home world 3 is is coming soon and that that that's a big thing for a lot of people risk of rain has been always always doing solid numbers you know what i mean like top there's 10 all time like like there's there's serious numbers and and actual potential behind the ips that take two are getting now it's about giving gearbox the right support to know how to pivot these games and then take them to the next level and really innovate on top of them again i just look for the potential knowledge exchange between them and rockstar and take to facilitating that to possibly be how do we get this to the next level how do we you know take narrative to the next level how do we again uh, again build our gameplay out how do we create more like uh, you know uh, expansive breathing living worlds and what we do uh, again i'm speaking specifically about borderlands in this context because i that borderlands is one of my favorite franchises i'm not gonna hide that shit and i want it to be you know more i want it to be more than what it has been more than what borderlands 3 was again sorry borderlands 3 i gotta pick on you a little bit but it's just what it is like there's a chance to build more on that and i think take two they naturally they are more involved because of how they've developed their relationship with rockstar maybe too damn involved with some of their business practices and you know monetization strategies but i'm hoping at the minimum we can at least facilitate the knowledge exchange for gearbox to understand how they can better pivot for the future that's that's my that's my high hope that we can really get them set up to turn a corner i think they can i believe they can with the franchise that they have um and i believe we already got confirmation through this that that, uh, borderlands 4 is already in development so you know there will be another borderlands on the way and i think it's critical that the next home world uh probably less so but still it's important and the next borderlands are 
top notch they have to really really lock in and nail this man uh for for again just the the sake of i i think their their public perception again they they're I wouldn't say they're they may be a little bit off the ropes, you know what I'm saying? Wonderlands definitely put a little bit of pressure off because I think that was a really fun game. Uh and that really like, again took to people, but or people took to it. But I think they really need that Borderlands, that Borderlands experience to really say, hey, you listen, our flagship is fucking back. Our flagship is doing numbers. We're back to where we're supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? And and this is this is how we're gonna start moving from now on. Um I'm I'm excited to see what they do, but also I'm very, uh, again, cognizant of, of how things can turn out if the, uh, I guess, wrong constraints are applied on on Gearbox by Take Two. So we'll, we'll see. We'll keep a close eye. Uh, hopefully Rockstar can be, you know what I'm saying, play Big Brother, put a shoulder around and say, hey, listen, shit's wild around here, but you know what I'm saying, here's how you navigate it and here's how we can come to a, a, a good understanding and, you know, make good shit, make good shit and do right by the people who are working on these games that's really all i care about so let's let's hope for the best let's hope for the best all right that's that we can move on to the next story here this one was a big one and out of left field man let's talk about larian studios man larian studios have officially said that they aren't planning to release expansions dlc any brand new content for baldur's gate 3 or anything about a baldur's gate 4 larian said they move they plan to move away from dungeons and dragons entirely and do something new the ip is going to be left with the wizards of the coast they're done with anything baldur's gate when how do you feel about this uh i think it's good for larian studios i love i love baldur's gate 3 i think it's a game that like like similar to how i feel about risk of rain 2 that's a game that 10 20 years from now i can be like yeah i'm gonna go ahead and tap back in like i'm gonna go ahead and boot that shit back up because it is something that is so special and so good it doesn't need not that i wouldn't love a boulders gate uh four or boulders gate five but it's something that i don't think is going to uh fade away i think it's 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 cemented itself as one of the best games of all time uh the reason i think this is good for larian is just the simple fact that Wizards of the Coast truly, and when I say this, are some of the most money-hungry people I've ever seen in my life. They are the people who own the D&D &D, uh, IP, and if their uh, movements around like content creation or any indication of how money-hungry they are, I can only imagine the pressure that they were trying to put for Larian Studios. Because they didn't make the game. larian studios where they did everything right all that D, &D all that was of the coast did was say hey you can use yeah D &D they licensed shit. it out for for what i'm learning again i i wasn't privy to what wizards of the coast even was but then uh shout out i think it was corliss that talked to me about it and jin ginseng a little bit in the twitter text i was i i, I had no idea who they were and they're like yeah they own all that stuff and then like yeah they they just license it out and stuff like that and from again just a little bit of research and digging they're very fucking strong-handed with that type of stuff oh my god yes. i've done like yes. I, I that looks bad it's a bad look again like that's like the what we talk about with how bad monopolies can get it, it looks a lot like that in some way bro like but continue yeah. and like as somebody who i i played D, &D years ago when i was younger mm -hmm. uh when i was younger, when i was in college i played D, &D all the time with the with the homies and I remember I was around when D&D &D Beyond first came out, which was like, hey, we're making a system because back then all you could do was like go on Reddit and there'd be people who like took uh, Excel sheets and would make D&D &D like got D&D &D like sheets that you could mm. like actively move around and like I'm gonna put my stats in here and it will automatically calculate how much damage I do if I land the hit type shit, right? Mm -hmm. I remember when D&D &D Beyond first came out, and I was like, oh, so they made this system. And in my mind, like a rational human being, I thought, well, what they're probably going to do is if you own the books, you know, maybe you could like scan it or look up, you know, the, the little QR code on the, not the QR code, but the, the little uh, barcode on the back and be like, oh, I bought this. Can I use it on D&D &D Beyond? Or maybe when you buy a book, they'll be like, hey, here's your code to unlock it on D&D &D Beyond. It's like, no, you got to rebuy all the books. And it's not like I bought my D&D uh, &D book, my beginner's guide or my adventure's guide. I can't remember what, it, what it's called, but mm -hmm. the one that you use to build your character from like a secondhand store they were like yo we got this book i mean obviously a little beat up but it's a fucking book yeah 
and I was like, cool, I got it, I got it for cheap. That shit is that shit is pretty expensive for a book. And the fact that I gotta repay for that on top of paying monthly, because you also have to pay monthly just to use the service. I was like, yeah, these motherfuckers really want these motherfuckers are really money hungry. So when I hear Larian is like, yo, we're moving away from this. Um, it makes sense to me because I played Divinity One, I played Divinity Two. Truth mm -hmm. be told, they don't need uh they really don't need Wizards of the Coast. I love DD. I love the DD franchise. I love like the classes, all that shit, but they can't stop you from making somebody who is a shapeshifter as a class. Like, yo, yeah, there's Druid, but what if I just made a shapeshifter who can also turn into animals? Or like, if you want to come at me legally, fine. I'll change it so that they can only turn into monsters. Like, there's there's avenues. The thing is about it is that Larian is so creative and just playing their game. They know what the fuck they're doing. They can easily do everything they just did without like affecting Wizards of the Coast at all. They don't need Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast need Alarian. And the fact that like Wizards of the Coast are known for people, there was I remember I think it was a summer where a lot of people who make D&D content were absolutely livid that Wizards of the Coast were trying to ask for a percentage of their income mm -hmm. because they were playing D&D on stream. And that's something that to put it into context for, for gamers out there, imagine if you're an Overwatch streamer and Overwatch said, hey, you need to start paying us for every Overwatch video and stream that you do. Every time you make money on Overwatch, while you're playing Overwatch, you need to send us a check. It's wild. It's similar to the music industry, right? Like if you use music in any, in any art or whatever you do, mm -hmm. you have to pay them. But like that is something that is very different because they would never they never did their own little DD beyond they never did their own little like critical role they didn't decide to do that other people did it and they're like now we want our check it's not uncommon but it's that kind of like mentality of like i'm gonna charge every single person who makes uh who makes D, &D content some to give to give me my bread mm -hmm. like you can't be mad at it actually no you can't be mad at it. it's one of those like are they allowed to? They they are allowed to, but what all that's going to do is make people less likely to engage with your shit. And I'm sure Larian had to pay a huge chunk of money to uh, Wizards of the Coast just to make this game that took them six years to make. And I'm sure it hurts them more to have to walk away from this franchise, but at the end of the day, I know it is the right decision for them. Because now that they have this skill, they have this under their belt, they can come out with divinity they could come out with like divinity origins or whatever like a new a franchise built in a DD world with their systems they there is only up from here they cannot possibly go backwards they are really talented wizards of the coast however they're going to take that little boulders gate franchise they're going to sell it to another company it's not going to be as good because they're going to probably try to like they're not going to give larian the same they're not going to give that new company the same grace they gave larian they're just gonna be like yo make it make us some money da 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 da, da. and it's going to be Sad to see. I have yet to see a game that's done what Larian has done with Baldur's Gate 3. And I'm talking Rogue Trader. I'm talking like mm -hmm. uh, Kingmaker. Like there's a, there's a bunch of games similar to it that cannot capture it. They're good, but they're not them. And it's really bad for Wizards of the Coast. And it's looking really bad for them in general because I've never seen... It would be like Rockstar walking away from like... Like if they were like, yo, we're not making GTA anymore. Take 2 actually owns it. We're done making GTA. You'd be like... Well, why the fuck don't they want to make any more GTA games? That game was amazing. It's like maybe because the people who own it or whatever are in big issues. Obviously, Rockstar owns GTA, but you get the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, again, coming as an outsider, I, I didn't really like I wasn't privy to much of the D&D &D world again before Baldur's Gate 3, honestly. And it, it was, again, I knew a couple of things, but I wasn't like deep into it and didn't know the inner workings of how businesses were set up and what the hierarchy of even licensing was. Looking at this, like from my view, more people know larian than they know wizards of the coast at this point in time uh, at least at least at least from an outsider's in perspective in the gaming space in the, yeah, in the gaming space let me let me clarify that in the gaming space more people know larian than they know wizards of the coast you know what i mean and since at this point baldur's gate 3 has gotten so big and the main name that's going to be behind that is larian looking at it most people are going to be checking for what larian does next not what Wizards of the Coast is going to license out next or blah, blah, blah. They don't fucking care about that. They, it's about what Larian does next. And it now that it hit me that they did Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, like, oh, they can go back to that. Again, like you said, they can go back to that and, and kind of build out a whole new world with what they've learned from, from the process of Baldur's Gate 3. They can go whichever way they want and, and whatever pathway that they set, you're going to have 
a flock of millions who have seen your work and in making one of the best games of all time like yo what do you do next larian what's what's your next move larian not oh what not where's baldur's gate 4 no 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 L larian's name has been directly attached and very closely associated with baldur's gate 3 throughout its entire run and i feel like that is going to help it in the long run and when, when making a brand new experience, they can take their time. They can work on whatever's coming next. And whenever people say the name Larian, they're like, oh, shit, they made Baldur's Gate 3. We here. I don't they don't need it. They don't need the, the hype of Baldur's Gate's IP. They've already built enough clout and credibility off of their own name to do whatever the fuck they want next. And I think that's a very that's a very freeing thing. I And I hope they feel that. I hope they really do feel how freeing that is and how how well earned that is, you know, to earn the trust of so many people uh again through their work and what they've done uh you know people who are either first timers you know what i'm saying who are like again very unfamiliar with the D, &D franchise like me or people who are vets people who have been there before like when you know what i mean having that earned title that earned status and to be able to go through what you want and seeing how how much shit you have to go through just to even get a game from the D, &D world out i would i don't blame them i don't fuck the fuck fuck boulders gate i don't give a fuck about boulders gate like, yo, you know how much it's going to cost me? You know how bad it is for these people? Like, how bad it is to just dealing with these people on a weekly basis? I have no clue. I assume it must be fucking terrible given the consensus on how Wizards of the Coast runs. Like, that is that that's something that is very, very much... I don't think it's a hard decision. I don't think it's a hard decision for them at all. They put in their blood, sweat, and tears to make something that they really wanted. That's a passion project. They're setting it down. They're hanging a rafter. It looks, we made some of the best D&D content out of any fucking medium ever. We can, set our, we can set our hats on that and move on to some shit that we want to do that won't kill us financially. Like that's perfectly fine and they can build out a story in the, and capture that same dna that they've had from Baldur's gate 3 because at the at the at the core of Baldur's gate 3 it's larian it's larian they're they they're what's making this whole thing tick because like you said there are other people that have that had the dnd property but they can't capture like they can't capture the feeling like how larian does they can put that into whatever they see fit now so it's just up to them it's really up to them to see what they do next but honestly I'm 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 happy for them. I'm happy for them, and f I don't think anybody should be disappointed. You know, what I'm saying the more you read into the situation, you shouldn't be disappointed on why they decided. Hey, let's let's leave this shit here. Let's move on to bigger pastures because we know we can we can do better, with, and we can work in better conditions than than what they were uh, again across across the the what six seven year cycle of of making Balls Gate three. They, they they're they're on to bigger and better things and we should be proud of them for that and, and nobody again should really be uh disappointed uh in their decision yeah and another thing too is like it's it's the only thing that's sad about this whole situation for me is that like unfortunately this will not really hurt wizards of the coast in the long run because mm. they own magic the gathering they own dnd &D, they own these free, yeah they own yeah they own magic the gathering damn so like they're making money they're, and they're going to continue to make money. And they, so this doesn't even really seem like a loss to them because all it will really do will be like, all right, we're going to give the franchise to some other company. And if the company does a great job, amazing for them. But if it doesn't, then they're still going to make money hand over fist because they own such money generating IPs. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really just the sad part of it. But if you're a fan of Larian, if you're a fan of Baldur's Gate 3, I would say go download Divinity 2 right now because that game is still amazing. Baldur's Gate 3 is amazing, but Divinity 2 like and the mod community for that is fucking bananas like i promise you larian will be okay this is probably in their best interest and honestly i think it's a really it's such a bold move i really mm -hmm. hope that this like encourages other other fr other people who are making games for these ungrateful companies to like you know branch out and do their own thing because they did, they did their time it was like paying their dues they did their Facts. time you know us now you've seen our game so when we drop divinity three divinity four or whatever you're gonna tap in because you enjoyed Baldur's gate mm -hmm. and it, and i will never fault somebody for seeing what they do, doing a great job with what they what they were you know the hand they were dealt and doing something different moving on to something else again although it may be a sequel it's something that nobody's really like in played in comparison to Baldur's gate 3 so it's like oh shit you know what i'm saying oh we we didn't know too much about defending the original sin let's see what this is about and you're bringing something yeah. new to the table you're bringing something different that's a a novel experience that a lot of people haven't gotten to in you know in the modern day in comparison to a Baldur's gate so like I, 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 I'm an advocate for stuff like this. I'm an advocate for going to new pastures and letting your creativity flow in new ways and not get stuck in the same, you know, in the same rivers and streams. So I'm, I'm, I love it. I love it.
All right, we can get it going here to the next topic. You know, after we talked about Marvel Rivals at length, uh, it's only fair to at least talk about this something new because damn near on the same day or within the same 24 hours, something like that. Overwatch 2 was like, what? Who dropped what? Nah, nah, drop that new legend. Drop that new legend right now, right now. So Overwatch 2 has dropped a brand new DPS hero named Venture. Again, I, I they, they're out now. They've been out for at least a day. Uh, when, from what you've seen from the Venture gameplay, uh, how the character fits into the roster, let me know how you're feeling. What's your thoughts? Um, I think it's a really cool character because it gives you like that backline access with the burrow. You get some displacement. You can push people around, which I think is going to be really useful. Um, they're also a bit tanky because of their passive. So you're going to be able to like get in, get in the back line, uh, knock them up, push them out, especially with, with a, a game where you, you need to focus the healers. It's going to be really good being able to like just do like be disruptive in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, the new character looks really cool. I love the design. I love the, 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 the concept is really interesting. It's one of those concepts where it's going to be sink or swim. Um, it's either going to be amazing and damn near because it just looks like a really good when you have a good team with you like hey mm-hmm. i'm gonna push the 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 reinhardt out of from out from in front and then we're gonna like capitalize on it or hey i'm gonna push the ana that's in the back or the dp or the dps that's in the back you could you could do a lot with this character mm-hmm. they look really cool overwatch definitely i feel like it was a little heavy not heavy-handed but maybe maybe it was planned or maybe it was one of those like damn we know they're gonna drop it on this date so we also gotta drop something on this (laughs) day but it's the character looks like a lot of looks like a lot of fun honestly and i haven't gotten my hands on it because i haven't played overwatch man i haven't played overwatch in a long ass time Mm -hmm. um but I do think that the Overwatch community is one. I'm I'm happy that they're doing like they're dropping heroes in like a beta test on the live server just to see like kind of as an, a little event. It's a, a I don't want to say a lazy way, but it's a smart way of making content. You know, of of being like, hey, we don't have a new event for you, but here's this character that you weren't going to be able to play otherwise. So like, why don't you tap in, see what's up? And I think it's good to to have those live people trying the character out because then you can leave with that that valuable data of like hey these people played it they didn't like it as opposed to like a public beta test where like some people don't even know those exist for their games so mm-hmm. i think it's actually a really i, I really love that they, that they are doing that but that being said will this get me back into overwatch Eh, not really but i'm happy to see them trying new things yeah um I am not an Overwatch 2 player, so I do not give a fuck about this. Uh, but, you know, good on you guys. You know what I'm saying? My hate has receded after the, uh, you know, the very well-received Overwatch, uh, Overwatch Cowboy Bebop collab. You know what I'm saying? My my hate is, has has waned a little bit. Uh, I'm calm now that 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 thing turned out to be shit. Uh, you know, we can all rest easy. We can all rest easy. So glad you guys got that one. You know what I mean? I don't know how, how long you guys' days will last, you know, uh, until Marvel Rivals comes out. But we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens. But this is a good legend. It looks cool. It looks cool, guys. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, big hate, baby, big hate. I found my new home, bro. I found my new home for hating. It's lit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> All right, we can move on to the next thing, man. Let's talk about Judas, man. Let's talk about Judas. Um, again, the new game coming from Ken Levine Studio. Uh, and this this was an interesting set of previews. We got a whole bunch of previews from Ryan McCaffrey, uh, Jeff Keighley. Uh, I think it was another FPS podcast. There's a bunch of them. And apparently a lot of people got invited out to, um, again, just Boston to where the studios are set. I um, guess they missed our email or yeah, something. Yeah, I know. I don't know. not seen it. Yeah, I know. I guess I guess we ain't, we ain't catch it. But don't worry. Don't worry, Ken. That's all right. We'll, we'll get you back in post. We might, might have went to spam. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But, you know, again, <laughs> it's, it's, it's being thought of as kind of like a Bioshock in space, quote, unquote, t- uh, type of deal. Very nonlinear story structure. Uh, three kind of different major side characters that will appear in different capacities in the game. Uh, again, a lot of different uh, a lot of different narrative outcomes, excuse me, uh, roguelike elements that are there galore. And again, just on top of that Bioshock gameplay that we know and love, you know, one hand magic or ability, other hand gun, get shooting, get the rocking. There's a lot of really cool elements in there that, you know, we saw that were expanded upon a little bit in some of these previews. But uh, from from your side, when how do you feel about how Judas is looking? It looks bananas. Um, It looks really, really crazy. I love the aesthetic like that. They're really going full acid trip is what Mm -hmm. it feels like it's just so so fucking cool um i'm really excited to see what they what they come up with the the way they were talking about the narrative lego pieces 
Um, that sounds something like it kind of reminds me a little bit of Fallout 4, but not not really as much. But it's like, yo, you siding with this faction is going to put a damper on this over here or like you don't know how this is going to affect you. But it's like that on steroids, you mm-hmm. know, like, hey, this person will actively get in your way. This person will be oh, this person who used to, would play a role in a supportive way otherwise now actually hates you and really wants to make sure that you don't succeed in life and i think that's really cool i think it's going to be it's going to give the replayability like you're going to want to replay this a couple times like especially like if i were to get this game depending on the length i if it's like a good if it's a solid good length i could see myself replaying it and siding with each faction wholeheartedly and then maybe mixing it up maybe i side with these two factions but not so much these two factions see how many We'll see what 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 changes and what doesn't change. I think that's a, a really cool. Uh, I I think what they're doing with the narrative is kind of creating a new life for the replayability of single player games. Instead of making the the game or like the experience of replaying something like Dragon's Dogma, like the first thing that comes to mind. Instead mm-hmm. of being like I'm gonna replay this game just so I can see what it's like to play it as like uh, instead of doing Rogue Archer, I'm gonna do uh, Warrior Mage this time around. Mm-hmm. Like now you can play this game. You're gonna be playing like instead of playing this game siding with these people i'm gonna side with these people and I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna switch it up on this this on this side so i'm excited to see this game like it looks really really fun it looks like a, mm-hmm. a wild ride yeah and i guess to kind of i'm trying to like contextualize it it's like you're not changing you're not changing the person that's in the roller coaster seat you're changing the roller coaster tracks themselves or adjusting them slightly yeah each time you perfect. go in yeah. and it's like that's so cool to me. Again, the way they were explaining it, again, the game could the game potentially has multiple endings, but throughout the game, as you interact and as you do missions, it's non-linear, so you can kind of go with whichever way you see fit. These three main characters, which is I believe Tom, Nefertiti, and Hope, they're all the leader of like their three specific factions, I guess, and like the enemy types that you might see around, and they'll interact with you as you do these missions. So, like as you're going, like again, Jeff Keighley was explaining it on one side, as you're going to one end, you know, what I'm saying this the one person, like, say, say for example, Nefertiti, you want to do a, a mission for Nefertiti, you're going to do it for her, but Tom sees that, and you're like, yo, Tom's like, yo, what the fuck, what's going on, and like, and apparently there's like sabotage elements like like the other npcs will block certain doorways like like tom or hope will block uh again will they'll block a doorway or they'll sick uh, different enemies on you try and stop you from achieving that objective and they'll interact with you in different ways that different dialogue options will pop up and it's just that that ability to create an organic feel uh, and again it's 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 something I explain in certain ways with dragon's dogma too I talk about this this week and not necessarily in the same exact execution but the intent and the concept and i think there was like i think there was a description of like a loose similarity to the nemesis system or like you know the uh, the ai just basically in, in essence they react the ai and npcs they react to you instead of just oh being on a track they have their own little set of a you know they'll have inputs and, and and responses but they won't do much else there's actual reaction and and really kind of living dynamics in the gameplay itself and you know again of course nemesis system doesn't it in its own way this judas system with the again narrative elements do, does it in a different way but i've been talking about this this week and i've been thinking about this for a while just like how do you make games feel organic how do you make them feel like yo this shit's only happening to you or a select few people you know what i mean and stuff like this is is really really cool uh, I, I just find it fascinating how like you can take a single player track a single player campaign and again you create so many different inputs and stimuli that you can go about the game one way and only about like 7% or like 12% of the world is going to experience it exactly how you did it. And who knows how intricate that they're planning these interaction points and, and the gameplay, you know, sabotage and the reactions from the, the faction leaders and the NPCs that you're going to be dealing with to, you know, as they're vying for your affection. Like, who knows how that's going to end up and how deep that well will go. But it might result in some really, really organic moments that, oh, in your playthrough, only you experience that, whereas in other playthroughs, people didn't even get on that side. Like, how, how the fuck do you even get to that area? Like, we don't even know. Like, it, yep. it, that's really, really cool to me. Like, and I think that's kind of the next step of where we're going in terms of next actual next-gen gameplay. Not graphics, not, you know what I'm saying, not fidelity, not 8K, 12K. I don't really care about any of that shit now because I don't have the equipment for it at this point in time. But... 
how do you really create the next gen gameplay shout out to dx from yt because he did a video about this as well and that, that really got me thinking about these questions like how do you develop the gameplay loop to feel, really feel like it's a next level thing it's more interactive it's more reactive it feels like it's living breathing and it, this looks like one of the ways that people are doing that and executing that and you know with like the selective memory loss and and like you know kind of replaying certain elements of the game again there's role like elements in this game as well so you're going to be trying a lot of different paths going to be redoing you know like doing things a, a slightly different way or adjusting to how things were dying and dying again and getting reborn over again like this is really cool and i think this can exemplify how you create a really next gen gameplay loop not just a next gen looking game a truly next gen game with how the narrative how the gameplay loop how you react to the game and how the game reacts to you that's really where this next gen shit is starting to lie and i love it uh on a random tangent i hate that wb license like license the nemesis system to hell we have i have oh man my closing note is gonna be about people licensing shit it's gonna be so annoying but again that's where we need to go that's where i think a lot of these different experiences need to go how do you cre how do you create more organic interaction or make it feel like there's organic interaction between you and the world like really immerse you in the next level like again you said it before dragon's dogma 2 does a really good job at this but in their own way with you know the world's interactions like monsters will fight with monsters animals will fight with animals they'll fight with you again the environment reacts to you in different ways the pawns will show up at like random times dragons play there's so many ways that the game feels real and immersive there's so many inputs that it can feel real because you you won't touch the same buttons as another person and you won't activate the same things as another person so it creates that feeling and judas i i think is is on track to possibly really bring a whole new face to that type of conversation of making a game so interactive it feels organic and i'm loving what i'm seeing i think this is really dope damn that was a lot of words right this shit five stars man <laughs> that was going in <laughs> <laughs> oh shit we can move on to the next topic here and we can talk about a, a an indie game we saw this getting built up uh, it was revealed at the future game show it's called spine now i am not sure exactly what it is but it's like it's, it's an action-based game then and the hallmark of this is a lot of like uh the crazy animations and gun fu combat again i'm loving like kung fu you know what i'm saying the kung fu punk was a term i heard recently from like uh from what's it called uh i think it was phantom blade zero uh this gun this gun fu stuff it looks really cool uh when would you make a spine it looks really fun i first when i was watching i was like man i feel like it's a little too slow for me but then like i also think about when i was playing seafood i remember when i first saw seafood i was like it looks cool but it doesn't look su super quick but mm -hmm. when i played it i'm like oh but it it's very like this I, if it was any faster i would not be able to play that <laughs> game so yeah. i was like I, I i had to check myself so i am enjoying what i see with this game i think it's going to be a lot of fun and it ultimately comes down to how it feels because i think it looks cool but the way it's going to feel is going to be a different story so i'm excited to see what they what they do really um with this game i want to i want to get my hands on it like that's the, the the main takeaway but it looks really really good it looks like john wick and sifu in a, in a way yes and i feel like again they're based off of, you literally kind of hit the nail on the head for me like it's, it's sifu sifu that level of like you know you want to be one versus all kind of going through it um I, honestly also i got a bit of um a tiny bit of batman arkham vibe just because like the the uh like the counter indicator or like the like yep. the, the hit incoming indicator like flashed over your yep. head and like honestly tapping maybe not necessarily in base speed is already automatically that fast but the more you flow it could be that kind of that that arkham style you know what i'm saying that rock steady type of combat system to where you know you're comboing more you can start jumping to a different enemies a little bit faster you know what i'm saying the, the the combat speed gets up the more you combo if you can get a kind of a build up and and, and kind of go a similar route as the arkham batman games in that sense i think it come up could come off really well honestly like like a very very like rewarding combo system to where it says oh word you know what i'm saying you're, you're getting your know, combo 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 you know what i'm saying they're not hitting you you're dodging you know what i'm saying the shots are missing you at right times and you're getting more proficient in that combo build you could probably speed it up as you go and that can create a really cool effect to where you know the base speed isn't like oh out of people's control out of people's hands where it's like oh shit this game is automatically too fast for me i don't know what the fuck is going on and i have no like real control over the situation 
but you also you know give people the choice to uh, you know eventually achieve that speed the more they can combo stuff around so there's a potential pathway there i i do think again the speed of it is again the concern from the looks of it but again it, it, if they go that route or you know they tweak the speed to whatever you know happy medium that they see fit i think it'll be cool i like the look of it i like the the poppy colors and stuff it, it kind of reminds me of like that specific part in spider verse where the spot kind of came out super powered and it's like the kind of like the glitchy effects that are like going around him not necessarily in the color scheme but just how they pop uh and kind of show up i like the animation that was really cool um i love indie games i love new shit so this is really cool again i'm a sucker for combat and if they say gun fu any martial art type shit i am automatically invested i am a sucker and i am a whore for that kind of thing i'm sorry that's just how i am uh so i'm very much looking forward to this i am very much looking forward to it i'm glad this popped up on the radar and yeah the the more they keep making tweaks uh i think they'll they'll be in a really good spot and i think this this might be something that's you know what i'm saying under the radar for a lot of people that eventually will rise to the surface so shout out to spine man very very interested in spine all right we can move on to the next uh news here so we talked about judas uh a second ago and i wanted to kind of get to this one uh so <laughs> so 2k games you know their publisher you already know them for several different things 2k have confirmed that there's a new bioshock game that could be cooking uh, you know in the near future that could be coming uh and you know again we just talked about judas and ken levine of course is you know the one of the makers of bioshock and you know 2k is like okay cool we got our own shit coming well, how about how about that uh so when how do you feel about 2k announcing that there's a new bioshock in the oven I, why did it take y'all so long you know mm. like i i not to be a jerk but i just feel like you guys are kind of like a little a little slow a little slow on the draw especially because you guys had a a head start i i think it more single player games are dope um i really want them to release i don't think they really need to compete with one another like of course that's like the, in their mind they're like we gotta get like the people who are gonna buy judas to buy our game too mm -hmm. chances are they would have bought both so i really don't want to see them competing like there's there's enough room for for both of y'all like I've been watching a lot of F1 recently, right? <laughs> and one thing I've seen is like people who are like, "Yo, you guys, you could end up fourth or fifth. This this team of two drivers on the same team could end up both in fourth position and fifth position, mm -hmm. but because they're both trying to be a, ahead of each other, they kind of crash and burn, and then it really affects, and then they don't finish and they they lose points. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I'd be seeing with them. And of course, these people are not on the same team. They want to be better than one another. But you guys are also don't have to start at the same time. You guys can just, I'm a really, you're going to release then. I, I'm going to give it three months, four months, and then I'm going to release my shit. The problem, of course, is if you're not putting out quality shit, that's the big issue, mm -hmm. right? If your shit is whacker, you want to go first so that that way people buy you. They're like, oh, I had fun and then play the other one. But if your shit is is whack and the other one comes out first, people may not want to buy your shit because they're like, why am I spending extra money on the worst game? So I think there is space for both of you if you guys plan it accordingly, make the game good, make a solid game. But I feel like it's it's a very it's a very uh dog eat dog world out there for these games. So I think there's gonna be very much a competition and it may honestly hurt both of them in the long run. That being said, y'all could just put both of them them bad boys on Game Pass. You know, I wouldn't be mad at it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know, I play both of them if I had them on Game Pass. Yeah, but that's real. Sh hey, shout shout out to them. I guess you know, make another Bioshock game. Yeah. Um. Again, this is my thing. As with most things, um, if you're gonna make a continuation of a series, and I I don't know what the talent is looking like, but obviously one of the people who made Bioshock is literally making Judas and several of his team who were making Bioshock, you know, Bioshock Infinite and all stuff like that. He just took people from the Irrational team and made a new studio with them to make this new game. So what is the talent and direction looking like for the next Bioshock game? And can it can it capture that same essence and DNA of what came before, but also deliver something new? That is the catch. That is the question. 
I don't know if they can do that. You know what I'm saying? Kojima left. Uh, what's it? Uh, Kojima left. What's it name? Konami. Konami. And, and they're still trying to figure shit out without. You know what I'm saying? With I without a remake, I don't know what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like people have left studios and things have not looked the same. The the what's it called? The Black Ops people left the MW3 zombie shit and MW3 zombies never look good at all. You know what I'm saying? Like when core talent who have the direction and pulse on a franchise leave questions have to arise suicide squad killer justice league another prime example the two creators of rocksteady left they split and things weren't looking up to scratch you know what i'm saying we could even take this out of games for a second um what's it called the good times reboot that everybody was like shitting on and rightly so they were like wait a minute i, I thought carl jones was a part of this a dude who like co-wrote the boondocks who was on the boondocks he was like hey i left that shit a long time ago this is not what i was writing this is this is a version i've never even seen before and that goes to show when somebody who has or somebody when talent in general have have a pulse on the show they have a pulse on what they want to create leave and things are you know kind of different now that the project's moving on without them Red flags do pop up in my head because I don't know where the direction, who might even be there to even think of having a pulse, and what what is their thought process on making that game. That's my red flag. I don't know what's going to come of it. I hope the best for, again, Judas and Bioshock because I want both of them shit to be good because I want to play both of them shits because I love Bioshock. So give me more. But I have to be concerned because of the talent deficit that we may or may not see again we already know for sure ken levine's not working on it so it's already kind of like a, a, a minus in my mind because he's been attached to bioshock for so long we i want to see who's involved in terms of talent at least from my personal view to make sure that you know they have that pulse of hey this is this is going to be where we're at we're going to stay in that vein and, and give you something that you haven't seen before so that's just that's just my thought on it yeah no it's it's going to be interesting, to say the least. And hopefully we don't find out through this game that you guys are awful to work with. Like, that's, mm. like just just drop a good game. Don't don't give us a reason to understand why people left your company. Mm. Like, But I don't think that's something that's easily controlled from publishers. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And again, and it's wild because, again, we talked about this before. Like, the one thing I, I stopped including in, in these news bits for the podcast is how many new cre- new studios are being created like every month. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so many. There's literally at least like five every single month that are created. A few of a few of them have shut down because of like people aren't investing and stuff like that. But it's a whole other conversation. But new double A indie studios with a bunch of old vets from all the big studios. People have worked on Halo, The Last of Us. You know what I'm saying? God of War, uh, Call of Duties. You know what I'm saying? All the big franchises from across triple A gaming. They've left and made smaller studios because mainly. It's the creative control. It's like, yo, we just want to make different shit, and these big studios are not thinking about that. That's the main reason I've seen. But anything past that, that's another big red flag. You know what I'm saying? The first one is a red flag, but not specifically for any any one company. That's just for the state of AAA gaming. You guys are stuck in a stuck in a rut trying to you know, again make make ends meet or whatever. But past that, those reasonings could be very very nefarious, and I I hope that isn't the case for some of those people that have left uh and yeah i just i just want good games i just want good games and an amicable process of making them that's really it all right we can slide on here to the next bit of news let's talk about uh man the uh the 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 cod killer or the or the cod the cod cloner i don't know what's going on bro x defiant let's talk about all the hullabaloo that has happened with x defiant over the past few days again so I'll start back with an insider gaming report that was talking about X Defiant apparently being delayed multiple times because the game's executives were apparently trying to, I guess, keep like keep and, and and emulate Call of Duty features, which is causing problems and and, and friction with development. Uh, again, apparently there's still no release date for the game. But there apparently that I've said apparently like eight times now because I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to force none. I don't want to force none, y'all. But allegedly, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? They were trying to copy Call of Duty a lot, and that's what's been causing some delays. And then after that, uh, Mark Rubin, who is, again, one of the executives uh, at X Defiant Studio, who's been developing, there's like, oh, nothing, was in the, nothing about our delays been down to features. In fact, not much has changed from a gameplay standpoint. The delay has been due to tech issues that we've talked about. Whoever said uh, we're chasing COD in Tom's report was a major eye roll. And then uh, Tom, uh, Tom Henderson, who did the Insider Gaming Report, quote tweeted, in truth, if you're a fan of X Defiant, I will be a little bit more wary in the 
future of, of the whole open transparency thing as it usually has bigger implications and doesn't reflect what's truly going on. And after that, there's been a whole bunch of things have, that, that, that have, I guess, released about X Defiance toxic work culture, crunch, uh, again, more delay things. And there's been some reports about how people have left, you know, again, uh, Ubisoft, I guess, studio who again who are working on this uh about just a lot of toxic stuff that's been going on i uh just again a boys club abusive things racist rhetoric a lot of things that have been going on and on top of the actual development of the game this looks very very wary so i mean when how do you feel about what x is doing and what the culture is at this at this ubisoft studio if they're chasing cod boys club racism man they're they they kind of taking all the boxes, if you ask me. I don't want to be an asshole, but like, hey, hey, we're not chasing cod, but we're being racist over here. I don't know, brother. That seems pretty cod-like, if you ask me. <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, like, uh you guys, like, I don't know what they they're like. <sighs> How do I put this? I see I see X Defiant as trying to be the COD killer. And the thing is that you could have been, because I played the game a little bit. It wasn't bad. It's not it was it's a bad solid game. Pretty, it was a solid it was base. Right. I mean, the 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 lag was unbearable. Yeah, you know, balancing issues was. here here and there. But we were playing out, we were playing what a, a beta. It's mm -hmm. definitely still not out. Um them chasing COD makes sense though. That's quite literally your competitor. Um, I don't to, to say that delays are like technical issues like okay like sure i i just don't know i just don't trust it if if people are coming out and saying that this company is toxic that is a huge red flag and honestly it's not something i really want to engage with i don't really miss the call of duty gameplay that much so i'm gonna go ahead and be like yeah i'm gonna just skip this i would have loved to see this game thrive and I may still try it out. I still want to see more news come out. But hearing these kind of work environments doesn't really, like, sit well with me. After seeing all the Call of Duty shit, like, all the Activision shit, right? Mm. Uh, and it really just feels like a huge step backwards. Like, I don't really want to have to go through another fucking summer where I'm finding all this shit out about Ubisoft. And Ubisoft really should be kind of stepping in and taking these, these accusations, like, these, these allegations seriously and really investigating. Because nothing would be worse to find out that X Defiant is fucking had the same Activision problems, but Activision co made Call of Duty, which made them bajillions of dollars. X Defiant hasn't even come out yet, and we're already hearing horrible stories about them. So, yeah, honestly, I, I think if y'all bit off a bit more than you could chew, I think you know maybe maybe close that bad boy out. You know, maybe put that put that to the side. Hmm. I. <sighs> This is this is this is what's getting me. Um, so let's just kind of talk about the more important issue first. Um, the culture at at these studios. If this is you know what I'm saying this is ringing true from what the reports have have been talking about. Like yo, there is there is much more stake than just the game being developed in this eye. Like bro, why in the fuck? are y'all so like why are waste men why are being so why are being so fucking waste like what's 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 the point what's the point like people just want to sit there and make their games if there's all this this boys club shit this this routine exclusion and just discrimination on various levels like what the fuck are y'all doing tighten up so that's that's already one thing you know what i'm saying M more shit knocks against ubisoft and get on that fix that shit because that's bullshit um and beyond this apparently you know what I'm saying? Again, just what I'm understanding from the situation, the crux of y'all delaying the game, uh, you know what I'm saying? You said it was technical issues and stuff, but the report is saying, uh, you know, it's just features. It's you're delaying the game to make sure features are put in post in post launch seasons. Like again, they they were saying like progression, uh, prestiging weapon challenges, uh, kill camps, kill streaks, potential theater mode. Just basically a bunch of Call of Duty shit. You delayed the game to figure out how you can implement putting this in in post launch, post -launch seasons. Much hasn't changed with the game. People have verified that much hasn't really changed with the game behind closed doors, which is interesting. So you're what's what's the what's what's the what's the mix up here what's the mix up i'm i'm very confused uh at, at what's the point of you trying to hold the game back so you can be more like call of duty and you're trying to be a call of duty killer i i feel like don't get me wrong you know what i'm saying call of duty has a formula but i feel like if you give more call of duty 
to a Call of Duty environment and you're not Call of Duty, you're just going to get pushed to the fucking wayside. When am I am I wrong about that? If you're a Call of Duty clone, you're just going to get pushed to the wayside. Am, am I am I incorrect? Am I incorrect? No, you, you are not incorrect. Um to try to 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 put it to you this way, X Defiant, uh you you can't get these people off this game. They are they are addicted. They are strapped in. Brother, tomorrow Call of Duty could be a turn-based game, and I still think a lot of people would buy it just off of the fact that it says Call of Duty on it. Like they would buy it and be like, "Who's? When did they turn Call of Duty turn-based? I bought this game, and that'll be the tweet. It's like I bought this, and it's like mm. you didn't even look at a trailer or nothing, bro. Like that's how locked in they are. Is that they would drive off a cliff if it was like Call of Duty's on the other side. It's like, oh yeah, sure, I'm about, I'm about to go pick up my Call of Duty. What do you mean there was no more road left? Like, they're blind. You're not going to really pull them from them. You have to get the newer audience. You, gotta, you have to pull other people away so that that way, your friend who only plays Call of Duty, his friends aren't on anymore. So then he's like, all right, I guess I'll play X Defiant. That's really the route you want to take. But copying them in the worst way possible is not the move, brother. You're, Bro. you're fucking up. Like there's already a there's already a gold standard that and somebody who's like feeling there's already a number one hero, guys. There's already a number one hero. You cannot fill the shoes with somebody who's in their prime of doing fuckery. You can't do it. You know what I mean? You can only try and have your time in the sun for about 15 seconds before they stomp you out. You know what I'm saying? Or you stomp yourself out by like doing just really stupid practices. And it's just wild, bro. I'm like, were they just so like ready to try and pounce on, you know, maybe some type of perception of what Call of Duty may be flailing? Like it's to certain people, it's never going to flail. Oh, excuse me. It's never going to fall. It's never going to, again, like falter in anybody's eyes from those Call of Duty fans. So trying to kind of swoop in and, and, and be opportunistic and try and be as close to Call of Duty as you can so you can like potentially overtake, that's a stupid move. That's a stupid move. It's not going to happen. The, the, Call of Duty's place in the gaming space, one of the most ironclad positions you can have. Unfortunately so. And to try to jump into that lane is like, you know, you're a deer running into traffic at this point. You're not going to get much success, in my opinion. Um you could have you could have again separated yourself like again you could have found a way to keep differentiating yourself i'm part of me does miss rogue company i'm rogue company still going but you know what i mean like <laughs> no uh, it's not <laughs> no I'm, I'm saying the server is still alive i don't mean it's still like not like barely the, i'm not saying it's I tried to launch that game i tried to launch that game three times in the past year i ain't getting that game now once damn man, I, I, damn that, it's and it's not it's i don't know what it is it's mostly a pc issue but that's the problem is that like that's an issue that i've had and i've tried on different months to play that shit and it hasn't been fixed rogue company fix your shit but go ahead Sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that bro that's, that's tough that's I, tough that's just my own that's my own struggle <laughs> charles can get in but i can't get in i gotta do a fucking a bunch of shit i gotta go to the anti-cheat thing and change the setting like it's bananas like no fix your shit oh my gosh that's 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 insane but this is this is my thing in all of this, whatever the case may be for you delaying it, you know what I'm saying? Which I really think that it's 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 closer to the, you know, in my in my gut, I think it's close to the explanation of you want to make sure you're trying to ensure your post launch content and the feel of your game really is airing close to Call of Duty so you can kind of get in the marketplace and have some type of staying power from your determination. In any case, I feel like this is a situation where you've killed your own hype very quickly by the reports and by mainly the lack of time with with providing anything, bro. When's the last time we heard an official update from from uh, X Defiant before this one? Any official update? Any trailer? Any you know what I'm saying like check in or whatever? Like and and at a real large scale level? Uh, I have it. No, I I don't think I have. I'm about to go check the X, X Defiant site right now. I, I just want to see what what's been going on, bro. December thirty first, twenty twenty three was the last tweet that they sent. That was the last tweet that they sent, and it, you know what it was? They said Happy New Year. They said Happy New Year on December thirty first. Yeah, well, like what's what's going on? What's going on, bro? You're. I don't understand why they think there's transparency when they haven't been transparent whatsoever with people. On, on online forums and online platforms and now we have to kind of go by the word of the reports that we're hearing because you're not saying anything and now we're like okay what's going on we'll, we'll deal with inside gaming what scoop do they have and now they're saying you're holding the game back not because there's there's something necessarily wrong with it but you're trying to copy more of call of duty stats call of duty's like a steez and the formula to try and get in there like what i i, yeah. I don't want to play x defined to play more call of duty i don't 
I don't think anybody wants to play one game to play like another game. They don't. They want that game to play at their own. Find your formula. Find what makes you differentiable from competition. Not it's not what makes you alike. I feel like this is this may sound stupid, but it's basic business. I don't think you want to sell the exact same shit in the exact same way that an already established business does. Or else, why the fuck would I go to you? That business does everything that you do. You don't even change your price. You know what I'm saying? They just do that. It's just them. They, they're a better established product. I'd rather pay for them than take the risk on you. So it, it's it's just wild to me that they, they've they taken this long to even be transparent. It's taken a whole report and, and people running at their door like, hey, heard you guys were toxic. Heard you guys trying to copy Call of Duty for anybody to respond to X Defiant. It's wild that it's taken this long for somebody to, to respond and to provide some level of transparency and some level of reporting from their side, some level of PR. And now we're hearing all this and pfft, like, I don't know. My hype has fell to the floor for this game. Honestly, this is not a situation like, again, I, I compare this to um, what's it called? Multiverses in a sense that multiverses has been out. Yes, they've been out for honestly damn near the same amount of time, if not longer than X Defiant. But look at look what happened. At least there's been updates. There's been trailers. There's been you know what I'm saying. As soon as they're ready to go, they had doom, 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 boom. Like they had stuff right there ready to roll on. Like again, transparency and staying there. They haven't even left the space totally. You know what I mean? There's at least people still replying on on certain things. I'm pretty sure Tony's been fairly active. Like it's just wild to see how things are coming to light now for X Define. But bottom line, my my hype for this has gone to the floor, bro. I don't know what's gonna be with this game, bro. But yeah. I, I'm good. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I think I think the issue that kind of comes with it is the fact that they're part of like a big major studio, right? Like they're mm -hmm. attached to Ubisoft. Yeah. And you and as much as you want to be like, you know, open and honest with your community, Ubisoft doesn't want that. Ubisoft mm -hmm. doesn't want you saying in that closed door meeting when they said, yo, we can't give you the funding because we don't think this shit's going to do good. Like, you can't possibly tweet that out. You can't possibly be open about that. So you got to have to, like, deny or move aside. Like, I don't think the route that they chose to being open. And I know this sounds weird for me to say, but maybe y'all shouldn't have been this open because y'all can't really sustain it. Y'all can't, then you can't sustain then, it. You know what I'm saying? Don't, like, don't, do, don't introduce to a vibe you can't maintain exactly and i think that's really what it is like they saw like how good it was for multiverses but multiverses in and of itself the only people they had to answer to was wb and the only thing wb cared about was the check like they don't really mm -hmm. give a fuck about anything else and wb will be the first people to tell you if we're gonna cancel some shit they're like man fuck you i don't care mm -hmm. like I'll, I'll, I'll shut this whole shit down if i want to um and ultimately like the other main factor is that people don't believe you when you say things like oh we're not you know we're not chasing call of duty we're not doing this and that like you're just not really trustworthy so i i really do wish for the best for them but i don't see this game being as good as they want it to be mm -hmm. bottom line people want new shit in this space they want mm -hmm. differentiable shit and if you're working to give them more of the fucking same you're working backwards so good luck with that strategy let's see how it how it pans out internally and externally but I don't I don't see it at this point in time. I just don't see it. All right, we can move on to the next topic in the way. Uh let's talk about Xbox, man. Xbox has had a lot of news this week and just kind of talking about their outlook on things, what 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 may, you know, come down the line and from uh Phil Spencer's words uh in a Polygon interview, you know, just thinking about how they can approach things. Uh and just what they're doing for their brand. I mean, you know, they're really, again, just super committed. And they've kind of like doubled down on finding ways to make sure Xbox is everywhere. And, you know, just looking at, they said Gen Z research. I think the quote here was, uh, um, this notion that Xbox can only be this one device that plugs into a television isn't something we see in the Gen Z research because nothing else is like that for them. Some of them will have an iPhone, some of them will have an Android, but all the games and everything is the same. So for Xbox, our brand pivot as we attract and maintain relevance with the younger audience is Xbox is a place where I can find great games I want to. Uh, again, it was just different 
uh things right there uh you know again there's been just talk back and forth that you know there's been kind of like that shift there's been all hands calls in recent times trying to figure out and and have them focus on different things there's been talk of them like considering different form factors again potentially having a mobile device you know what i'm saying not like a phone but like again a handheld uh potentially looking at that uh phil spencer's also stated that he wants pc storefronts on xbox consoles like epic game store and steam he wants them on xboxes so uh it, it's an interesting take Take to see how how their outlook on the future of gaming is set up but when how do you feel about some of the words from from them or where xbox is trying to move towards i think moving towards having like steam and other other platforms on the xbox would be an interesting because like that would change the game uh so to speak because you would be approaching gaming more to like an xbox being a mini pc than something like a playstation where it's like so you can only get it from the PlayStation Store. And once people find out, like, hey, like, and I again, I still think PlayStation is PlayStation because uh, PlayStation is PlayStation because PlayStation can have those gods of wars. They have those games that are, like, fucking amazing that mm-hmm. Xbox cannot replicate. But if I was to tell somebody who's, like, you know, trying to decide on what, what, get, what to get, and I'm like, yo, this Xbox now has discord steam like it's basically a mini pc that's affordable Mm -hmm. it's hard to argue against that you know like it's a really that's a really good deal at the end of the day like it's a really good deal it's a really it's it's arguably the better console because it gives you the more freedoms that playstation just straight up doesn't Mm -hmm. i think that's something that a lot of people love about the steam deck is that it's not just a steam machine you could use it as a literal mini laptop and that's what was one of the major appeals of it um I don't think I think that that's a better route of going than being like let's make the let's make the X the X go which is the Xbox on the go like I don't think that's really going to sell units the way you want it to uh, the market is pretty locked down on the lower side you have the switch and on the higher side you have the Steam Deck you'd have to be like somewhere in the middle but why would I pick something in the middle you know if I don't got if I don't really care about a, a handheld I'm gonna buy a switch if I really want a really good handheld I'll buy a Steam Deck you know i i love the idea of like i love how their open-mindedness going into it i think that's my that's my bigger takeaway and i think that the the availability of other storefronts will it while it might hurt the xbox store i don't think it will hurt it as much if you like just can match those deals you know if steam's having a deal on far cry 6 like sure just try to match it or they may not fucking buy it on Steam. They may just still buy it on Xbox. Mm-hmm. Also, Game Pass is right there. There's a, there's a big chance. If I'm buying an Xbox console, Game Pass is my go-to. I really don't know how many games I would actually buy on the system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, th- th- this, this is my thing. Um, uh, Xbox, they've always had to fight from underneath. This is them. They know that they see a pathway to actual sustainability in multiple platforms or multi-platform strategy not like and not like oh we'll drop a couple of games here truly trying to expand as much as you can without without really cannibalizing your own your own self and i think that it's a strategy that will be dangerous it's a very much a tightrope it could be it could be an up and down topsy-turvy type of process but it can work for them again looking at looking at just who they are bruh look at who they are they're one of the biggest fucking publishers in the world all right and you want them to have some 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 xbox fans want them to keep all their games on the third best-selling console of a generation every generation you know how much money they're losing out on again we got to call a, st- a spade a spade with these guys they're running they're running a business as much as i as much as i want you know what i'm saying them to think another way or, or think a little bit more positively about things or whatever they're they're at the they're at the guillotine that is the bottom line you know what i mean they're at the guillotine that is a, a stock margin or whatever the hell they're looking at you know what i mean they want all of these things to stand up and be accounted for on their own their environment their ecosystem the games that they put out uh publishing all that stuff being multi-platform just makes sense and again i feel like they've known this for a very long time we said this before when they talked about like the first kind of inkling of them some of their games going multi-platform like sea of thieves and stuff they know that they can't bank on their brand leverage being oh we just make good games you know what i'm saying they can't compete off of that 
off of that alone. They can't compete off of that, you know what I'm saying, that theme alone because Nintendo's stronger than them and PlayStation is stronger than them in that regard. We can we can call a spade a spade and call fact on that. But they can compete in their ability of access. They've they've said this for a long time in a lot of different ways. Xbox is the best place to play. You can play anywhere with your friends, blah, blah, blah. Xbox on PC, da, da, da. Like Game Pass. They can get a shoe in with their access. And it's a tight, it's a tightrope game to play. It's a dangerous game to play. You're essentially, you know what I'm saying, diminishing your own intrinsic value to some people by putting yourself out in multiple places. Some people that may look off-putting, but to other people, that's that's access. That's access to money. That's access to different things. Sea of Thieves ain't probably never gonna get as much money as they're about to get because they're on PS5. Grounded might not get as much money if they weren't on PS5. You know what I mean? Like that access and connectability is something that can save them you know what i mean it can actually put them in a good place it, to me it's 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 a it's a sacrifice play for the greater good to some people it's a sacrifice play to the greater good i don't even think it's necessarily a sacrifice play it just makes sense like bro when when have you not known xbox to really start pushing stuff on like you know oh we want to have this on pc at minimum on pc and xbox on multiple platforms what have you never what have you ever known them like from xbox one era on what have you ever known them to say, nah, we want to keep this shit here? No, that doesn't really seem... That's not really their MO, because they're, they're, they're smarter than that. It's not, it's not, bro. And again, that... That old... The old way and the traditional way of console, plug-and-play, you get game for console, that is, again, ironically, still kind of behind the eight ball of where technology is moving forward to. You know what I'm saying? And they say in, this, in these reports, and people know it, again... Your device does multiple things. You connect to this. People have their phones that, you know, have Google Connect and they you can cast it to your TVs and shit like that. There's so much technology moving around and Xbox knows that they can get they can play catch up by getting in tune with this fact rather than, you know, falling back and standing on. Oh, we just make great games. That's, that's all the fuck we need. And again, that's still effective because people are still fucking buying PlayStations and Nintendo Switches. But that can't be Xbox's MO because they know they're behind the eight ball. They don't have the brand equity for that. They don't have the brand strength for that in the gaming space. So they have to find another way. And it's that. And if Xbox fans, if Xbox diehards are mad at that shit, too fucking bad. You're not you're not the ones paying. You're not paying enough for the, the consoles. You're not paying enough for these games. We got to find another way. You know what I mean? That I think that's what their what their mindset is at, and I'm, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. And if that means bringing uh, an Epic Game Store and uh, a Steam to an Xbox console, I think that's a possible good thing. That's a good thing. You can play your Steam games on an Xbox console. I think that's really cool. And again, that provides a different challenge to competing consoles. That that provides a challenge to PS6 because people are gonna see it and they're like, oh shit, that's a good idea. Damn, we were kind of dabbling in it, but we don't really fucking need it. But that might make the space a better place they're doing things that i think you know some of them might really be a, a net benefit to the console game when you think about this shit like for me again prime example xbox game pass i i don't think playstation was considering that shit at all at a certain point they dabbled they thought about it but they're like yo we have such a lead why the fuck do we even need to do this shit but xbox needs to fight from underneath to sustain themselves in this market so they pushed it hard they put it apart put it as a big centerpiece of their ecosystem and then what happened sony had to catch up sony had like oh shit we gotta start putting things together we gotta start you know putting this on top of that and 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 and, and try and compete at a certain level with this service and you see where it's headed you see where it's headed so I just think that uh, Xbox, uh, they're, they're, they they got to get more in tune to sustain themselves and to keep building. That's why you're going to see more games on on uh, on different consoles. That's why you're going to see, again, their hardware, different form factors that may be uh, more inclusive of different storefronts and, and different ways to approach gaming. I think they're going to really, really hone in on where technology is moving you know what i'm saying they're trying to stay in pulse with how technology is so adaptable now to make their ecosystem adaptable and and make it approachable to so many different people across the world and and that's their in that's their in and my only thing is yes assimilate with that with that with that i guess framework get into that because that's how you get in but how do you find the balance to not lose your strength lose all of your strength as a differentiable brand you know what i'm saying you're everywhere cool but you've got to start 
sustaining the back end and trying building a catalog of stuff that really is stuck with you that's your first party shit and again it can be less so in terms of number but the quality has to be there in my opinion you, you I, I i i don't think for xbox's sake you can't have one without the other in certain like major things like like, like again if they don't have no games worth dropping which i don't think is true but they do this this whole thing they're still going to kind of be at a disadvantage because they don't have games that people want to play. You know what I mean? So yeah. the, with, with the Gears of War, with the, you know, whatever Halo comes next, whatever new IPs that come through, they have to, while they're assimilating and, and working on their own way to, again, maintain an edge and, and try and catch up in the console game in, in between Nintendo and, and PlayStation, they have to find a way to bulk up the traditional method of, garnering some type of notoriety and garnering some type of success and that is making great games they have to they have to couple both the access has to come with the great games again the order is going to be different they're working on the access thing primarily and then while other things are getting developed in the back on the back side they're coming through with that but the games have to be there with the framework of how you're at, how you're approaching access access has to pair with games simple i agree yeah yeah damn phil spencer talk with us man phil spencer give us a call son we, we, we spent some hot shit today bro we spent some hot shit today man talk to me for real for real oh man rich podcast five stars you know what time it is bro but let's talk about something that is coming to our uh you know what i'm saying game controllers and game consoles and everywhere uh well, i think almost everywhere uh very soon let's talk about flintlock the siege of dawn they had an extended gameplay look uh, not too long ago, I believe uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, actually a couple of days ago, three, uh, but they talked about all of their gameplay loops, the systems that they're talking about, the combat and mobility, the weapons that you're able to access, the enemy types, and key the, your campaign that'll roll with you, your reputation system, uh, and just a whole lot of how the gameplay will look when Flintlock drops. When, talk to me, how did you, uh, again, take in Flintlock the Siege of Dawn? Uh, Flintlock looked really, really dope. I love that system that they showed, which was like um, how your attacks are the basically build up your your ammo types. I really enjoyed the gameplay. It looked like it low key looked like a I hate to say it like a fun Souls game. Like it just felt like it was faster. It felt less restricted in the sense of like roll here, make sure you don't get hit by this move. But it still had that punishing aspect to it. It looked like a lot of fun. I love the 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 concept of the flint weapons. The only thing I didn't really like too much, but I understand why they did it was like how some of the weapons you have to like rest before you can use them again. But of course they are really, really strong. So it makes fighting these characters, fighting these 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 enemies easier. But I also like my anxiety with with the way my brain works. I feel like I'm gonna get to so many different rest stops without using any of the weapons because I'm like, oh man, I don't want to waste the bullets on this group because what mm -hmm. if they're easy to kill type thing. But I think it's gonna be it's it's gonna come with like playing the game and knowing what's the right time to use them and what's not the right time to use them. But I think the game looks phenomenal. It looks like a lot, a lot of fun. And the way that the combat flows, I know I'm gonna be spending a lot of time playing this game and just checking out different builds, using using because I remember even in in the one of the fights they showed how like they used the the gun as like a combo ender so they'll use a whole combo and they'll shoot mm -hmm. but then somebody was about to jump on the main character and they used the gun to stop their lunge which yep. was like oh so can you use defensively and offensively it looks like they have a lot of options for you and definitely looks like a really fun time yeah um this is my thing we talked a little bit before the podcast about this type shit um this is my thing about souls like games i uh, I, I've, I'm, I'm growing in appreciation. I was fearful of them, you know what I'm saying, before. Not necessarily scared to play, but I just wasn't necessarily interested in playing them for a long time because of the mobility. And I like the crunching gameplay, you know what I'm saying? You have to time yourself. You have to very be very patient. There's dangerous enemies that, that are going to be there. But I just felt like the the mobility was more of an enemy than an ally in a lot of these Souls games, and that's what got me... Uh, that's what made me avoid them in, in in a lot of different ways. I'm like, why the fuck do you have to be so fucking slow? You know what I'm saying? I want to use a this yeah. one attack to get around and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? An attack to try and be more mobile or dodge roll. You know what I'm saying? The slow ass dodge roll, like I'm over encumbered or some shit like that. 
I feel like Flintlock really does help to achieve. It, it achieves a balance between, again, mobility that looks like it, it helps you. It's an ally to you rather than just a hindrance or, you know what I'm saying, really ineffective in some cases and has that crunching gameplay of Souls-like games that, that we know and love. So I really enjoyed that. Again, the slides, the jumps, uh, the using flint weapons to even, again, aid your mobility more, like you add a, a double jump I've seen before, uh, having those things. So I really, really like how the blend of movement and the combat are just like synced in this game from the look of it i really enjoy that i think that's a really really solid like you know just middle ground to have because you know me i, I am i mean i'm a fucking kingdom hearts 2 fan i'm a movement whore i love that shit i want to jump around i want to feel like i'm like floating on air type shit when i'm fighting or at least have some type of agency over how fast and how much i can move to dodge attacks i don't i'm not the best parrier but i I like the dodge, you know what I'm saying? I like the slip, slip and weave shots, you know what I mean? So I like that type of stuff. And on top of that, that, that reputation meter in combat is also really, really cool. Um, again, adds a bit more risk in and of itself to where, you know, again, basically they said, uh, you know, combat, the different things you do, kind of style points, combo meter, you'll build up your respect through those and you can keep risking it to multiply it as you go on, as, you know, so long as you don't get hit or else it resets to zero. And then if you get to a certain point that you save, you're like, all right, cool, I'm done. You can bank it and that becomes your respect that you spend on, you know, again, customization options, different weapons and such. I think that's very cool as more risk reward to the combat rather than just, oh, you get these souls if you die you have to reset and go find those souls uh, on the floor um i really do enjoy that that tweak uh the game looks really really beautiful i like the different set pieces and stuff that we found the different environments very varied uh the bosses look super cool uh again norvanic uh as a, as a protagonist looks super cool anki looks dope as fuck i like that there's again i feel like the the gift and a curse in souls like games sometimes is that you f you have to find a lot of these things that, that that build buffs where you know sometimes i want a little bit easier i will be honest sometimes i want i want to find this 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 customization a little bit easier i don't want to have to go up a fucking mountain path to find a, a comet spell i you know they they have the whole skill tree of anki that shows different like you know status effects you can apply to your weapons or different little attacks you can apply to anki itself yeah it, it's it's there for you to build on in the menu itself which is good i think that's great you can spend on it and really customize it how you want in there instead of having to go on like a fucking you know what i'm saying shrek one adventure to go rescue a princess and then go find that shit i like that um you can do whole ultimate abilities and like fuse with anki you know what i'm saying like i both had the earring on from dragon ball like it, that's cool um i'm enjoying this bro i've always had my eye on this game i think a44 were really really like uh on on some solid wavelength with this shit from the jump and i think this can stand out as a really really uh again just differentiable and fun souls like game we've seen a lot of them come and go but i think this one can definitely stand out because it has that blend of movement has that blend of customization and you know it just it just looks and feels different from what i've been seeing so i like it i like it and again we talked about it before the podcast one of probably one of the best souls games if not the best souls game was sekiro because it did yeah. so well with the souls like approach but it also added very very like smooth movement to it and you felt like you could do more with what you were given so i'm 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 having a good day the more i see it the more i like it man and shout out to the flintlock social team man they keep they keep it they keep keep it locked on that side they're a fun social team as well so uh i want to see more flintlock i can't wait till this drops me too no nah, this game looks really really good and i as most most of you have probably heard by now i'm not the biggest fan of souls like games because i feel like they're oversaturated this seems like a good step away from that and it seems like something that i i think is needed at this point like something to showcase like the whole lock on spin around like combat but with a little bit more personality Mm -hmm. yeah no 100 percent, 100 percent. but we can slide on to the next thing here and talk about uh the, the switch too and and one of their you know what i'm saying potential marquee lineups we heard reports from andy robinson from vgc that sonic heroes could get a whole remake for the switch 2 could be again a first year title that's incoming when uh, how do you feel about this Eh, you know, I, 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 I know I'm gonna get butchered by by the Sonic fans. Sonic um, Heroes, yeah. what'd you say about like, it? What? Like, it's. I don't think the game. Like, I remember playing that game it was bad fun, and like to this day, I still am upset that I wasn't able to cop it when I when it first. Because I, as a kid, I would have loved this game. As an adult now, I'm just kind of like, it's fun, it's cool. 
Um, I would love a remake if it's going to be done well. That's my biggest takeaway. It's like, I don't want them to just be like, oh, we kind of just put a new coat of paint on it because I could just emulate it for all that. I mean, allegedly emulate it for all that. Like, I want something... I want it to feel good. I think if they do it right, oh, man, is this game going to be super gas. I would love to play this game uh, done correctly. I'm not holding my breath, though, because at the end of the day, it is quite literally a Sonic game. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, like, they just... There is... Like like the Von Erickson curse, you know. Sometimes you get good things, <laughs> uh, but sometimes you don't. Shout outs to the Iron Claw. That movie is I'm still fucked up till this day. Uh, but like it's just like sometimes you just like everything should go right in this game, and then it doesn't, and it's tough. But I think with what they've done with Sonic, it was not forces. Oof, I almost said Sonic Forces. Mm. The what's the newest? What was the newest one that Frontiers. dropped? That was open world. Frontiers with Sonic Frontiers, it was, I knew it was an F word. <laughs> um, with Sonic Frontiers, they did an amazing job in that game. And I know some people are gonna be like, it still sucked. No, you suck. Um, <laughs> it, they're, they're moving in the right direction, and I, f- I have a lot of faith in the team. So if they can pull this off, we're in the money. If it's ass, ah, it's gonna be another Tuesday. <laughs> hey, nah, I hear it, bro. They got listen, everybody's looking at that. that uh... The Sonic Generations or whatever the whatever the one with Shadow was that was just recently announced, and then this one. Yeah. If this is if there's any truth to this, they're looking at that like, okay, shit, let's see what's going on because you actually set up a decent platform with yourself for Frontiers. Like, yo, it was actually you know it was a seven seven and se- seven seven and a half out of ten. So like, oh shit, okay, wait, we're here. This is this is good for Sonic. Let's let's get this momentum rolling. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. we'll see what comes next uh, with a potential Sonic Heroes remake. And again, for the Switch too, it just that timing automatically makes sense. First year, you already know. Nintendo's gonna have some shit out the wazoo for Switch 2. Their their first year lineup, I think, is gonna be very strong. Uh, I feel like that's why, again, like Pokemon ZA, Zaza, that shit's getting held back till 2025. Uh, Switch 2, again, in general, is getting held back till 2025. I think they want to have stuff like ready at the go, at the drop of a hat, and this this could be a big ad for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know how I feel about these nostalgia tags, but again, just for the business side of it, I guess from a business standpoint, this this would be a good move for them to wait and and have very much in their first year. All right, yeah, after that, we can fucking slide off that. Uh, real quick, actually, before I get to the next piece of news, is this was literally just, like, confirmed, uh, it's like, six minutes ago, just to double back on the, uh, X Defiant thing really, really quickly. Um, Ubisoft confirmed, like, six minutes ago that the game was supposed, the game was supposed to launch in March. X Defiant was supposed to launch, launch in March, but they got delayed. Apparently, there's gonna be some type of server test that will happen soon, like for 12 hours on all platforms. And uh, another one. Yeah, they wanted to stress test it and give us critical data. And then they said after that point, they expect that they will have a launch date for X Defiant in the future. So, what do you, how do you feel about that one? Um, again just not the one i just like man i don't know i don't think it's it's already off to a such a choppy start um shout outs to skull and bones Mm. it is just like in a in a rough state right now and as much as i would love to sit here and be like you know what i think they i think they got it i just don't i just don't think they got it i just think this game might fizzle out because the thing is with this kind of a game the way that it's going right now i think and this may sound like a shocker to most I think you kind of need to go the uh, the multiverses route of just like letting like you you gotta you gotta give it time, and I think this is what like the third fourth mm-hmm. network test we're getting at this point. Where's my yeah. check? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a QA. I'm a QA tester at this point. I'm doing this this many tests. Yeah. So what am I? What's what? I I don't want to play it again. I don't want to play it again unless it's out. What's the point of me playing it again? To help y'all to hire some people. This isn't my fucking job. Mm -hmm. So I don't really care that they're dropping another test. I'm not playing it. I've already played it twice. And both times I was like, oh, this still needs some work. So for you guys to tell me that it's supposed to come out in March and now you're just giving me a beta in March. Shut up for a year. Heads down. No conversations. Just work. Just work ethic. Every day. Hit the gym. 4 a.m. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need... I need Mamba mentality on this title for you guys to really turn this bitch around, but I don't give a fuck anymore. Like you guys just keep talking a lot of talk. Where's where's the game? That's what we want to know. Where is the game? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the time is uh, past for 
their uh, I guess any multiverses like transparency because at least at the end of their last beta multiverse was like hey we're we're we're, start, we're starting to shut this down we're gonna sunset it for a little while we gotta work on some things they at least provided you with the update people people were mad for different other reasons but they at least provided that context of like hey we're gonna be gone for a while guys please expect us X Defiant didn't say shit they said hey update's done cool see y'all later and didn't provide an update since and they just expect to kind of waltz back in and still have that same amount of hype i don't think so so it's 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 an interesting situation that they're in but again right right now their their hype is uh in the gutter in the gutter as one would say i don't know how they're gonna you know what i'm saying i don't know i'm curious to see what's changed in the with the play test i'm curious i'm honestly just for my curiosity i do want to try the play test to see what they even changed just like potentially i know i said it's mainly stress test servers and stuff like that but if nothing changed with the game I feel like that it doesn't least... sound like it did because yeah. I mean even the guy said it like it got delayed for not new content it got delayed because it just got delayed like because of technical issues yeah. so all I'm playing it is the same beta I played before with less technical issues no mm. <laughs> no get, a, get QA testing yeah, like that's give also, me that's give true. me a reason what's my incentive what's my incentive to redownload this bullshit no, and jump facts. on these servers no. what is it no, you know, yeah, no, no, you're not even wrong. You're not even wrong in that sense, bro. But it's just, it's just funny because I'm like, I just want to see how that, how that looks in the, in the stress test, what their date is, and then what that, what the post launch again looks like now because they might have changed the roadmap. And if again, if shit starts to look like Call of Duty, I think we'll know what reports were verified and what, and what wasn't from you know the words of who. So that'll be an interesting conversation when we cross that bridge. But I just wanted to again di dive on, dive on that really quickly. But let's jump to another conversation really quickly. Let's talk about Warzone Mobile, baby. Warzone Mobile. The launch numbers were not as hot as before man call of Duty wars on mobile launched with about 1.6 million in revenue in its first five days uh again us was the biggest market 1.1 million and uh the rest was again just about a half half a uh, half a million in comparison call of duty mobile had 4.2 in its first four days in 2019 clearly a downturn uh compared to things before when our call of duty expert how you feeling i'm not gonna lie to you I thought this shit was already out. <laughs> I thought it was out when they first heard about it. I'm like, uh, um, damn, no Call of Duty mode was out doing crazy. Man, I, I I, don't know what to say. It's almost like people are using their phones for other reasons. Like, mm -hmm. man, I, you know what? I do say this. I, w I do feel bad for, well, I actually don't feel bad. Um, Because it's not really the, the mobile game community's fault that this game isn't doing well. Like, maybe it's just, maybe they just need to tighten up uh call of duty again i they, they kind of phoned it in with the last couple of iterations so i'm not surprised that they phoned it in for the mobile version no pun intended low mm. no, pun was intended mm, it but, was so intended yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean like i'm not surprised but i think the launch numbers aren't really gonna be the biggest money maker because we know that in mobile games it's the microtransactions it's it's the the other things that go on with it I don't want it to see it go the Apex Mobile route um, because mm. Apex Mobile low key was kind of hard compared to regular Apex. They had yeah. like they had all the cool shit, Fact. and maybe that's what maybe that's what the what this needs. But I think a lot of the again, I think a lot of the Call of Duty fans are just tapped into. Um, I think they're all just tapped into regular Call of Duty, like, and I also think that the mobile community also has a lot of games already that did what Call of Duty does. So for Call of Duty to kind of try to jump in and like be the big the big money maker, it just doesn't make sense when all these other games that are out already do what you do, but better. You know, like they already do. They already have these these. They're like a million Call of Duty clones on on mobile. What what separates you from them? Because you actually are Call of Duty. Oh wait, mm. so it's it's a war zone. My bad. I'm over here still talking about Call of Duty Mobile. I was thinking about Call of Duty Mobile. I'm not surprised because PUBG Mobile is huge. Like PUBG Mobile is enormous. So Warzone not doing good doesn't really surprise me because there's already bigger uh, battle royales on that on that platform. Mm. Yeah, um, I I more people are outside again. So one who gives a fuck about Warzone mobile, I don't care. And again, it's the same content just on a mobile format. I don't think this, the the percentage of people you know might not translate as much on from there to there. Again, of course, mobile's a much bigger market, but it's telling that you know people don't want as many fucking battle royales on any platform we just don't want battle royales on any platform that much anymore bro again call of duty is gonna do like some they're gonna make some type of splash because they're ip but battle royales getting is getting phased out brother it's getting phased out you know what i'm saying i slowly but surely 
the the big dogs will stay in their relative places but that whole that whole pond is is drying up thank god in my opinion mm. thank god uh but we can move on to another news story here let's talk about mass effect baby let's talk about mass effect and some very good news with the development of the next mass effect game so bioware's head michael gamble again a notable name on the franchise says the executive producer the art director creative director and game director have worked on the original trilogy so those again the that that tenured talent that experience on the mass effect franchise are back in the driving seat for the next mass effect uh so it, it's it, it's cool it's cool I, i'm i'm very very excited about this again michael michael gamble i'm pretty sure michael gamble is the executive producer actually that might have been a typo but uh yeah it's, it's 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 beautiful to see in my opinion when how do you feel about some of the like returning talent coming back for this next mass effect game that's awesome at the end of the day, I still feel like EA is going to have a major part to play in what, what freedoms they give these people. But I really, really want to see how, uh, how this shapes up to be. It's, it's still early days for me. Like, I still need to see what, what they can make come up with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I am being hopeful here of an EA property being good. This is me being hopeful. <laughs> it's going to end up better than Andromeda. Ah. <laughs> that was so pain. That was so much stress behind that. He said, ah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. All right. All right. So this is my thing. Um, EA knows damn well they need to really crowd around certain single player experiences to make sure that they do well because they know how good they can sell um again the star wars jedi survivor games prime example of this uh and uh i feel like they've already got certain grounds covered you know what i'm saying they're, they're pumping into apex legends there's apparently some type of new apex game coming you know from the the titanfall team respawn team uh steve Fukuda and all them it's not titanfall 3 i don't know why the fuck it's not but that's a whole other conversation there are some bases that need to be covered in terms of what they can draw from existing franchises the two like the two biggest franchises are two of the biggest franchises that you can pull from in terms of single player numbers and get good output from mass effect dragon age i feel like those two have been again dormant sleeping giants they've had their own tr- struggles trials and tribulations that's just bioware in general after what happened uh from uh the game i, f- I forgot the name of because of i've repressed the memory uh oh yeah yeah never mind unrepressed anthem that was what it was uh so there's already a, an emphasis to make sure these next few games from bioware are knocked out of the park again there's been a lot a lot a lot of careful meticulous very very painstakingly you know what i'm saying just like watchful development over uh dragon age uh dreadwolf and um the next mass effect game and like how i said before in this podcast about how people leaving projects signifies a red flag people returning that have experience in these in these areas and avenues that have a good track record are a green flag to me this is a very green flag in my opinion i i love mass effect let's not fuck up mass effect that is my bottom line for all of this and if that requires the again some new blood who are again taking care of certain things and trying to help expand where we go but also understanding how delicate and sensitive some of the nuance of bio of of about a bioware game let alone mass effect in and of itself is and 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 kind of navigating through those nuances i i'm more than fine with this i'm more than fine with this i'm more comfortable that they're in the driver's seat to help bring another mass effect in so they can not only again help build this next game but also help teach the people who are newer to the franchise who are on those teams the dna of 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 the ip the dna of what they made the dna of what came before and that can help guide them to where maybe if they decide hey i'm probably gonna set it down and move on to some other shit they have the dna of what came before instilled in the new blood and that can have a knock-on effect the synergy and i feel like that's something that is really understated in how games are made just just from a consumer standpoint because i mean most people don't give a fuck to know but it would be nice to kind of have that background information a little bit 
people understate the synergy of the team. They understate how experience and how tenure over an IP and seeing it come to life for the very first time builds those bonds and builds that just that 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 natural understanding of how these things go down in whatever IPs it is again you see you see what happens before you know I'm saying when teams are formed when they do good and when you know I'm saying tenured executives and tenured people in those spots leave it just it doesn't feel the same because it might not have been that same amount of time to mesh with again other members and really give the message of hey this is what works this is what doesn't this is usually how this might go the tendencies the tendencies build the habits form and really really strong teams for that ip are established and them coming back only helps to get closer to what the dna of mass effect is i like this i want this again i think they are being more careful ea is being very careful with with bioware i think at this time i think it's one of the things they're actually doing right they're not rushing them in any sense of the word and i think this is perfect because the way these single player games can have an impact i think they want to take as much time as they can and i, I think i think bioware deserves it after after the shit that they went through getting pushed so hard on anthem like i i think they deserve that time and it's only going to end up being a net benefit to 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 you know the mass effect game that's coming out soon please don't fuck it up please please my heart and soul is riding on this that's it is literally honestly in my power rankings right now it is my second favorite game franchise of all time behind kingdom hearts it's literally my favorite game franchise of all time i absolutely love mass effect and i was a late fucking bloomer i was so late to this game i love the mass effect games uh the mass effect trilogy is fantastic i still gotta play through andromeda so again that's why it's so high ranked in my playlist andromeda might drop it down a little Ooh. bit but i don't know but <laughs> that's what y'all telling me that's what y'all telling me but, but uh, <laughs> all i'm gonna say is that i remember being in your shoes and being this optimistic about a new mass effect game i played mass effect 3 on the playstation 3 i bought the collector's edition and it was closer to the to the playstation 3's end of the life cycle so i can't say i was like the first person waiting for each game to drop but uh yeah there's a reason why i'm not very excited for mass effect 5 uh and <laughs> i just like i can't i can't give you that experience that i had of, of hearing andromeda waiting listening to news and finally getting that game and being like this hmm. is it i don't even <laughs> i don't even think i beat andromeda i think i got kind of i think i didn't i don't even know how far i really got it kind of it was so disappointing i didn't beat a new game on my playstation like it was just Dang. like and it, it just maybe i'll go maybe i'll revisit it maybe i'll revisit it but boy shh, you have fun with that let me mm. know how it goes yeah I, I listen i gotta get my due diligence but uh for me uh with this news i am very very optimistic about the development of mass effect and the, and the next one that's coming just because we have that experience back and that can that can be a real guiding hand to what's coming in the future but yeah, we can slide on here and we can do a quick indie check in of a new game that was coming around. It's called Corrupt, Corrupt, C-O-R-E-U-P-T. It's like a fast paced, uh, again, 1v1 fighter uh, got to be enveloped in, uh, you know, Unreal Engine 5. A lot of, again, take takeaways and inspirations from Marvel vs. Capcom and kind of the speed of it, the flashiness. Uh, hey, I'm saying got 11 fighters right now. Roll back net code. Uh, FGC people, come on, roll back net code. Snap for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, apparently it's coming to Steam and Xbox late 2024, PlayStation thereafter. When, again, Resident FGC, man, uh, we got to get your takes on it. How do you feel about Corrupt? This reminds me of um, this reminds me of Killer Instinct. Mm. Uh, I was watching this and I was like, "Damn, I kind of want to go play Killer Instinct." It looks really, really fun to to be the person comboing, not maybe not the combo the comboed or whatever mm. the, the the terminology is, but it looks really, really high paced. It reminds me similar to like Marvel. It's just like a big combo game. Um, Rollback Netcode, obviously a huge dub. I think this could be it. Could be something. The thing about fighting games is like. Even if it's something that people don't really like adopt like a Tekken or like, you know, I don't think people are really going to ever get a Tekken or a, a, uh, a Street Fighter level of presence on, on a new game, unless it's attached to a very like popular IP, kind of like the way multiverses kind of blew up or the way um, even like the way Smash Bros is. But I think that every almost every fighting game gets a fan base, gets a, gets a player base because they're all fun. They're all genuinely fun in learning their new systems uh it's really interesting so i'm interested in playing corrupt because it does look like kind of similar to a killer instinct and 
who knows maybe they can do something like that killer instinct hasn't been able to do which is like maybe they can engage the, the fan base with characters that are interesting enough to make people tap in you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying like yeah. i it looks really really interesting the characters are like dope but like it's gonna come down to how fun the game feels the characters and if it's it, it just has to capture them in a way you know mm-hmm. um but it looks really 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 good and i'm excited to see to see what they come up with there's a couple like indie fighting games that i've kept my eye on uh shout out to serial killers that mm. or serial killers that shit looks uh really dope that i don't i don't even know if they have like a build yet but um not to like take away from corrupt or mm. or cor- corrupt i don't know if i'm saying it right but that's yeah, a game that i've also I'm like seen <laughs> yeah nice. that's another uh serial killers is a game that i saw a little update about earlier it's a fighting game that takes all the your favorite serial game like serial mascots like lucky charms tony the tiger mm. obviously they can't use those ips but they make versions of them and they're all, and they're in a fighting game it's actually like they they take their regular backstory and twist it it's pretty interesting mm. i'll definitely I'll, I'll have to send it your way it's pretty interesting Word, no let me know i'm about to say no yeah, send that to me but uh i hear it i hear it um I'm, I'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep my eye out for that shit because it, it definitely looked pretty cool too i'm about to say no, I'm not the corrupt, most... corrupt looks really 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 interesting Nah, solid work. It's honestly solid work. But yeah, we can uh, move on to this story and talk about a little bit of Capcom news. And, well, <laughs> your favorite franchise is back when uh, that you haven't seen before in a while. Resident Evil. We've got some news about Resident Evil and some rumors that have been uh, swirling around talking about Resident Evil 9 and potential implications of open world technology being used in the game so there's been some insider reports that have been talking about you know dragon's dogma 2's kind of you know usage in the re engine and how they've been applying you know their stuff apparently that that kind of some of those functionalities and 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 how that's been working for dragon's dogma 2 and the open world functions it's being apparently built and uh experimented on in you know the next monster hunter wild game and resident evil 9 so there may be some type of open world component coming to resident evil as a franchise uh how do you feel about this one man i think that that's pretty dope uh i love and here's the thing i just hated that every year the biggest announcement was a resident evil remake (laughs) but a resident evil 9 like of open world could be kind of gas like Mm. you know you got your survival elements maybe you're like you got like a beat down like police car you gotta keep finding gas for us you gotta keep like stopping a little like settlements or like houses and like exploring them like i think it could be really really dope i really cannot wait for monster hunter wilds like i that is that 2025 It's weird for me to be at a point in my life where GTA isn't what I'm most excited for in 2025. Um, And it's mostly just because I know that shit will be gas and I know it's going to be fun and I know GTA is going to be a great time. But I'm excited for Monster Hunter, man. I'm excited for Monster Hunter and, and Death Stranding. Those are like two games that they just, they're just so like, they're, they're gems that don't get enough attention. GTA 5 will stop the world. I mean, GTA 6 will stop the world. Mm-hmm. We know that. But a Monster Hunter Wild, seeing somebody, like, play that for the first time or seeing, like, a friend of mine, like, like streaming Death Stranding and people coming up to me afterwards being like, yo, I had no idea the game was like this. I thought it was genuinely just walking around and being like, no, no, no. Let me show you this experience. I mean, mm-hmm. let's experience this together. Or even getting people to play Monster Hunter for the first time, like, getting my girlfriend to play and she's like, okay, I'm just picking stuff up what the fuck is that and then Mm. it's just like pandemonium like just having those experiences is like what it really excites me is like exploring these experiences with people and sharing that with people i am excited to see what an open world resident evil game is gonna feel like because i think that's one of the one of the biggest things i didn't like growing up and this is a me thing not a game thing i was always like man i hate that i can't fucking find more bullets because i've literally looked everywhere and we're in a we're in a small ass map mm-hmm. i know that there are no other crevices that i can find to get more bullets for this gun and having an open world i think is going to open up a lot more ways of approaching these games because that's one thing that i love about elden ring if i couldn't go do this over there i could find my own little like corner where i could grind out shit or i can i could work on on getting better gear just so that i can like go and do that thing over there so i think that's going to be really cool about resident evil is i'm gonna be able to 
maybe I don't want to go to the main mission right away. Maybe I want to go find a shotgun or find more bullets for my shotgun or mm -hmm. just explore a little bit more before I go tap in over there. Of course, that is exactly the reason why I never finish games because I'm too busy <laughs> finding everything else around it. But I think open world Resident Evil, open world Monster Hunter, just an open world RE engine, like, I, like it's it's gonna be amazing. And I can't wait for the other implications. Like, what happens when we get a Dragon's Dogma three in a big? Because this Dragon's mm. Dogma is open world, but imagine yeah. a bigger open world. Because it's not saying that the game feels like confined. But you know, you've got your paths, you got your mountains in the way. Like, it's very much a regular RPG. But imagine a bigger open world for a game like Dragon's Dogma, or a bigger open world for a, a variety of other Capcom. Imagine an open world Street Fighter. I'm kidding. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> It's Yo, like, where, yeah, are, where did you getting, drop? Yeah, getting comboed the fuck out of him. I'm running away, nigga. Fuck you. What are you <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think this is a really cool uh, step forward for them. And honestly, I just I just can't wait to see what they what they come up with. Uh, this is going to be really dope for the future. Keep your eyes on Capcom. Man. Yeah. Um, my... <laughs> I don't know how to feel about it. I really don't. Honestly, I, I'm I'm excited to see what the application is because I feel like it depends on what I guess what's going to be the I guess relative I guess narrative use like what's going to be the area like I mean village village was it was an open world but it was definitely a lot of things that were a lot of different varied spaces that were in a, across a certain area I, I don't know what the relative size of that thing was in or what comparative scope it had to other games but again those they're not open world they're not like again vast crazy expanses you know what i'm saying i don't know what it could mean but if applied correctly this could have a really a really big net benefit to what resident evil is you know what i'm saying and provide a different experience but also again just gives a lot of a different perspective which i think could be fun it could be fun maybe you have a whole portion of raccoon city instead of just one of those little areas of raccoon city to deal with and that could be a whole different game in and of itself you go back to raccoon city and you have the whole like an area to experience you have the whole city to, to dive through and go to nooks and crannies and you know maybe have another fucking what's the name uh mr x be chasing you down through the whole city instead like there's there's a lot of ways it could be sliced i know there's the automatic uh hesitance to go open world and I do too. I absolutely do too. I have that hesitance in my in my you know what I'm saying, like my heart. Like yo, I don't know how this is gonna exactly pan out. Uh, but the the way that Capcom has the system in place, like looking at Dragon's Dogma two, it could be an interesting turnout. It just depends on what the application, what the context for an open world setting is in, in, in Resident Evil. If it, if it was if it was necessary, I'd be like, okay, why the fuck? Like, this was, this, we did not need open world, you know what I'm saying? And I will say that for most games. Why do we need open world in this shit? You guys are just wasting time and filling shit with fluff and filler. But if the world is actually a good additive to the context of the story, the characters, what we're actually doing, what's the point of why we're here, then I'm not going to discredit it. I'm not going to discredit it. It's too early to say that, you know, it won't be a benefit to the Resident Evil game that's coming down the line. I can't say that, you know what I mean? But it, it could provide something really great. It could be something that's a, a giant, you know, time filler. And that's like, oh shit, why the fuck did we even do this? Like, I don't know yet, but the prospect of that and applying that, 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 you know, that content from re engine and what dragon's dogma 2 has done that's an interesting prospect if you cook it right it's as long as you cook it right i think it'll come out very very solid and people will find some way to enjoy it and even then this is my thing strategy wise they can probably take a risk and try something different with re9 because you're probably going to make you still have to remake um, resident evil 5 resident evil 6 resident evil code veronica remake code veronica damn it uh and and you'll have you have a bunch of ways to still maintain the natural path of you know this is how resident evil games were this is experience y'all know and love but then you can also experiment and go a little bit off the beaten path within Resident Evil 9 and try something different. So there's an option for people to, you know, like it. And at least you can try. You have the wiggle room to try. You've made enough money off Resident Evil to try these things now. So if there's something that brings a different spin on the series, why the fuck not? As long as it's, as long as it's good, as long as it's fun, as long as it provides something that is different and fun, I'm all for it. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to see how it's applied. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to be... I'm not going to discredit a a way of playing just because we've seen it a lot of times before. Yes, it is trite, but if it's if, but if the same old trick is applied in a good new context, then people will applaud the trick. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, as long as there's innovation there somewhere, we can we can work with that. That's that's my thing. But I'm I'm interested to see where it goes. I'm interested to see where it goes. 
All right. And on to the one story we have in the trailer trove. Uh, so we have uh, our resident uh, claptrap for the Borderlands movie talking about, uh, you know, just just video game movies in general. You know, like why they aren't like more made more often. Like, what's the what's the deal with it? And I, I believe the relative quote from Jack Black was, uh, I can't believe they haven't already started making a movie of any of the Rockstar games, Grand Theft Auto, but especially Red Dead Redemption, said uh, Jack Black in a recent interview. Those things are already like movies, you know, and just to kind of get your thoughts on it when why, why haven't they, you know, what I'm saying done a GTA Red Dead movie. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, I just checked how much I, how much time I clocked into that game. I'm at 45 hours. So that's probably one of the main reasons why we haven't seen a Red Dead 2 uh, movie is because it is, I've, I've been playing it for 45 hours. I'm sure I've put about the same amount of time into something like Death Stranding and things like that. I think it also comes down to just like the way that these things work. Um, I think it is hard to really like encapsulate a 30 hour story into like two maybe three hours at most and then i think a lot of people are also afraid of like branching out and instead of for example like doing a halo movie they they do something that's in the halo universe they're afraid of doing that because they don't want to alienate the fans that are here for halo they're here for master chief so it's really difficult to to do i don't think it's impossible whatsoever but i think it takes like a lot of coordination not only with the the filmmakers and the the people creating these projects but also the people who created the projects to begin with and that little level of coordination isn't always easy when it's like hey i want you to i want to bring you on as a director but i'm also going to kind of low-key micromanage you because you can't do everything that you want and that's another thing too is that you need to have respect on both set both ends of that spectrum you need to have respect for the director and for their their work and being able to say hey I'm going to do this um, and, and we're going to let you kind of play around with this, but you also need to have respect for the video game itself because that's how you get things like Master Chief taking off his helmet or like whatever Doom the movie was. I haven't watched it at all, but like mm -hmm. I, you, need to, you need to have a level of like, everybody needs to go in it with this idea that this is bigger than us, right? I am not, I am not signing up. Me... Dwayne the Rock Johnson isn't signing up to take my helmet off. Like that's not the character I'm supposed to be playing. Like I, you need to go in there understanding that, um, this isn't like, this isn't something that, that this isn't something that I am going to use to propel my career outside of like giving fans what they want. Like you have to treat it like that. The game and the story goes above everything else, and I think that's why something like The Last of Us works so well is that it was a perfect mixture of being able to like Pedro Pascal being able to act in his way, but also the directors being able to respect the story and deliver their own little twists and their own little things. Like, for example, that episode three that was not in the game at all, like, you know, that was a good way of, like, being able to say, I'm taking the creative freedom on this and I'm going to show you guys what I can do while also being like, all right, I did my thing. Let's go back to the story that we all know and love. It's, it's very difficult um, to execute, especially with longer games. Something like a Mario movie, a Sonic movie, I think it's way easier because they're just, they don't have these narratives already driven. But when I play Red Dead, I don't play Red Dead because of the gameplay and because, you know, Cowboys shoot them. That's one of the reasons, but I'm also invested in the story. And if you're going to take away the story, which is one of the reasons I like it the most, uh, I'm less likely to enjoy this movie. And that's really where, where the disconnect is. Like, mm. that's, that's why Mario movie works, why Sonic works, because there are story aspects in these games, but they're not they they yeah, don't they're not fleshed this, the, out what the fuck yeah. who's there for who's there for a plumber saving a princess really you know well, what I'm we're, we're jumping on goombas we're here for the gameplay there's a, there's a there's a lot like, more creative expression in that because it wasn't established like i know that if we watch the next sonic movie and shadow and that little girl maria doesn't get absolutely lit the fuck up a lot of people are going to be upset like that is a major but if they're like you know what's the creative freedom of not killing the little girl in the, in the movie a lot of people are going to be mad and a mm -hmm. lot of people are not going to be happy with the movie because you're taking something that that is a core of what they what what they believe is their characters and saying nah i'm gonna do my own thing and they don't want that mm -hmm. and that's the problem with the video game movies that's a, there's a balance that needs to be done it's really difficult but it can be achieved but you need to remove a lot of egos like it's 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 way harder than just be than taking a book and making it a movie because nine times out of ten the people watching this movie have not read the book but when a video game movie comes out there's a there's almost a 100 percent chance that at least 80 percent of that room has played this video game and have 
real strong feelings about certain things in those video games. Mm -hmm. Um, and just to kind of add on, I guess maybe the before side, like just like a steps prior to what you said, and and some of what I think Jack Black was kind of getting onto in his quote. Uh, he also said. Uh, that some video games are already like halfway there to telling those kind of stories. And that's kind of the part that I'm like harping on in this point. You know, you kind of harped on like, you know, when they actually take a game and like, how do you adapt it? Uh, sometimes like when you're looking at it, I, again, one of the big things we talk about is, is this game even viable to make a movie about? Is it, is it viable to be adapted? And the craziest thing is some of them are so viable, they're already fucking movies. They're already basically fucking movies. Red Dead Redemption is a movie you can again this is a common practice in gaming but there are so many cut scenes that certain games may have that they'll just stitch them all together and they'll say hey red dead redemption 2 movie and all the cut scenes and i'll just put that there and it's a movie it's like four hours long you know what i mean like some games are already productions you know what i mean and some people and some game developers and all that stuff like that have that in mind to where they want it to be so cinematic and have this developing plot and action and characters that it's already a feature film when you think about it it's already a fucking feature film We're just moving those characters as we go on or moving a specific one and so we don't need that translation so in the case of a grand theft auto grand theft auto i think is more adaptable to get into a movie because there's maybe a lot more plot lines you can use and pull from and stuff like that like you don't have to use the same one-to-one -one characters you can use any random new character to say oh we're gonna start this fucking bank heist and have the same craziness of of that which would kind of look like logan lucky without all the hillbillies but it's it's basically that uh that's more adaptable but right there redemption specifically i don't think you can really adapt that without major friction because there's already so much plot and story and nuance and themes baked into it that there's not much wiggle room to innovate in that unless you're unless you're creating a whole different story in that universe and you're not even talking about john marston or arthur morgan or any of those people you know what i'm saying sadie sadie holmes or whatever her hell her name is like if you're not talking about those characters or or you're or you know what i'm saying if you're yeah my bad. I missed my words. If you're talking about those characters and trying to develop something with them and their story that's already been told before, there's not much you can do. But if you're developing something that's very, very different or you're taking them and putting them in an all shoot situation, you know what I mean? Like, again, people said the next Red, Red, Red Dead Redemption should be about Sadie and how her story develops after the events of, you know, Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2 and shit like that, which is fair. That could be a movie because we have that's unexplored territory. But so many games have so much plot within them. Metal Gear Solid is another thing that's its own fucking movie when you already know about it, you know this more than me i haven't played all the middle gear solids bro i barely played any of them but he knows when knows that's a movie in and of itself and we it, it's, it's it's dead ass and a uh, uh, uh like a double a double down bond film it's literally that times 10 because there's so much more shit that goes in and so much more off the wall elements that come in and i don't think that can be the easiest movie to adapt unless you're just just coming up with your own complete story outside of the realm of what's been made before it's it's the realm of what has already been established and what you can create that is separate from that. And I feel like games like Red Dead Redemption, uh, Heavy Rain, there are already things that are so embedded into the DNA of it that it's already a fucking movie. It's already a movie. It's already a feature film. There's no need to expand on that. And that's just kind of like the line we tell. And that's why we always say, again, there there needs to be a level of adaptability how can how easy can you make this property a movie how easily can this translate to the big screen or uh, a tv series or an anime you know what i mean there's always those those qualifiers on what we talk about about you know video games going into other mediums because it, w things are already established or there's some things that might be too big of a stretch and that's just something we got to be cognizant of as we go along you know movies and uh, games a lot of games have always tried to be like movies and tv you know what i'm saying the space in general wants to be as respected as movies and tv because that's just how it is we want to have that yo that stamp you know what i'm saying you see you see how the game awards are you see how a lot of people want to move certain productions to be more cinematic and include actors matthew mcconaughey is coming in and all these established people are coming in to you know fill roles and stuff it's naturally moving trying to be more established and you know and the ways a lot of people in the industry see it is to be more cinematic and be more involved in certain things that you know that might revolve or, inv or involve hollywood actors professional actors and stuff like that that's just natural progression of how things are but just it's still a very different medium compared to movies and tv and some things just don't translate because they've either already been established which is the main thing here or are too far of a leap to, to translate yeah and it's it's something it's funny when you when you were talking about like Mass Effect being your top three fran 
top three franchises i was mm-hmm. like in my mind i was like i wonder if he I was like, I, th- I don't think he's played Metal Gear Solid. Not that it's saying that it no, would no, be no, 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 top no, no, no. one or whatever, I, yeah. but I was like, in my mind, I was just like, that, that's the first I, thing that came to mind. I was like, I, I wonder have, if he played I that. I haven't played, I haven't played them all through. I need to, I literally need to sit down because I know, honestly, I've seen enough to where if I play it, I know I'll like it because I, I mean, again, I love intricate stories like that. And again, it's one, it's, it's fucking espionage. And I love espionage shit. Uh, two, it just involves a whole bunch of like crazy, wacky scientific concepts and shit like that. But the plot looks so good. Uh, it, there's a lot of things that I would enjoy about it, but I just never got the, the, the end. I never double dutched into it. You know what I'm saying? I was just always on the outside looking in and, and then, and that's, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. I, I get that one. I only, I only got into it because they released the anniversary collection mm. when I, when i when i had like i was like at home nothing to do during the summer so i played all of them in like uh, one summer. Pee, pee, pee. um but no yeah exactly what you said before like some of these some of these things are just really difficult there are already movies and they're jam-packed to to extend a story beyond just a three-hour runtime and it's really difficult to, to to condense it i think it's possible and especially like i think kojima's making death stranding into a movie like that's a game yeah. that i think you could cut out a lot of stuff and make it into it and then get to the main point mm-hmm. but you're still missing out on a really beautiful moments Facts. that you can only experience in that long elongated playthrough but i think i, I think especially with the way dune's rollout has been where like mm-hmm. they released part one and now they released part two of a of a one movie like it's all one book if they can take their time with it the way they did in that movie i think like it can be done like we have to respect that some movies are going to be longer than just three hours and i am somebody who hates <laughs> three hour long movies i hate it with a passion yeah but in this context if you want to do something right if you're going to break the the longer than three hour rule by making this into multiple parts you might as well do it the right way you know don't condense everything really small because you don't want to make more more than one part like if you have to do what you have to mm-hmm. that's real that's real man uh just again quality first to keep walking on that tightrope because translating games into movies is never easy or there's just no room for it so be careful be careful uh but all right uh, with that being said that's pretty much all the notes i got on the main show anything else that you you know what i'm saying felt at liberty to cover anything that we might have missed um nothing really uh eddie gordo got announced uh and i like that tekken is announcing their characters like what maybe three four days before they're out like announcing the release date and showing the trailer like they showed hey this person's coming out and then showing us the the gameplay trailer close Mm. to the release date i like not having to wait too long after being hyped up yeah but yeah that's the only other thing that that happened uh that i wanted to cover yeah um yeah there's a couple other like small hits that we had just a couple things um into the dead our darkest days guys might check might want to check that out that game looked really cool uh, i'll say it again into the dead our darkest days uh check that out that, that actually looks pretty solid um there was a mobile game developer that poisoned a founder of a company and killed him i was like bro this shit is serious bro like what's going on mm-hmm. some of y'all was tweaking out um no man's sky dropped another free update again you guys are like right, bro like we love y'all but start working on uh, what's it called the, the other so start working on a sequel game bro we love y'all so much yeah somebody y'all crazy somebody tweeted somebody quote tweeted this and was like please sean please i have money please take it <laughs> I, <laughs> like, I, I can give you a dollar like come <laughs> on son he's like we forgave you 10 updates ago please <laughs> you take my money but no I, I i love to see it bro they're doing amazing stuff there uh, uh the orbital update they kind of like revamped all like their spaceships uh, it was like space stations i think they like revamped them a whole bunch which is pretty cool um dc universe is still fucking alive again them and gta online are like the most like ridiculously alive games i've ever seen in my life i don't know how you're still like living uh grinch voice um there's a brand new souls like game i think it was called Intoria: the last song and xbox were like pissed off about it because it's, it just wasn't coming to xbox for some reason it's coming to ps5 and uh pc on august 21st um it's like kind of it's i think it's based on like italian like folklore and stuff like that which is cool that's cool another souls like game we'll see how that kind of fares out looks a little bit uh crunchy but we'll see what's going on uh we'll figure that one out um last thing i do want to say i think this is worth the read anybody who is out there uh there was a statement from sven sven vink uh you know i'm saying the ceo of larian uh at gdc 2024 he was talking about again just the collective greed in 
gaming in general and i really think you should read that statement i'm not going to take up your time and read it here but uh I'll, I'll, i might put it in the comments or, or the description box uh you know what i'm saying when we drop this on youtube and stuff give that a read because it was seriously like it just helps give us perspective on on where game developers are at and i think it's really on the consensus of where a lot of us are at and we just want we just want games to be made bro we just don't want the bureaucratic money chasing bullshit and it was just a very good quote so i think y'all should check that out um with that being said let's get up out of here man when give me your closing statement for episode 90 uh drink your water lab your tech in and play games man stop stop worrying about everybody else Mm, real shit real shit um my closing statement is if there's anybody you want to see on the podcast let us know man we're really trying to reach out and and get to more guests and you know we're working behind the scenes to get you know more people onto the pod more different perspectives and just talk about you know the news with them or talk about you know just their progression and and, and their time in the space whether they be creators industry folks uh we want to get more people on the pod we love hearing different perspectives on just a lot of different shit and it's always dope hearing new voices seeing new faces and just interacting with new people uh let us know who you think would be great you know fit to come talk about games uh talk about their journeys uh that would be dope make sure you go support the pod everywhere no cool down pod or no cool down podcast uh I, we del- i deleted the other uh the duplicate uh podcast account on on tiktok that got shadow banned so that is no more so it's only no cool down podcast on tiktok so no confusion anymore on that front you guys should be good uh again go check out all the dope content that's coming we got shorts segments all that good stuff coming through keep your eye on the summer we have some cool stuff planned uh some really dope stuff on the way uh and with that being said we're gonna slide up out of here man for episode 90 spin the squad no cool down pod we are out of here peace